Hi, this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Stories of the Supernatural. Wherever you find us, whether it's a video or podcast on your favorite platform, please like and subscribe to us so that you can get notification of when a new show is released. You can also find us on major social media platforms. If you go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com, you can find links to the videos or MP3 files, which you can download and enjoy without commercial interruptions. If you're into classic horror, ghost, and adventure stories, I narrate Nightshade Diary, and you can find links at NightshadeDiary.com. If scary stories are your bag, and listening to encounters with cryptids, ghosts, dogmen, and other weird creatures sends a shiver up your spine, then go to SupernaturalStoryTime.com for links to our weekly podcasts. Noteworthy news about the paranormal world, true crime, conspiracy stories, and anything that is just plain weird can be found at eerie.news or visit the Stranger Than Fiction Stories tab at MiamiGhostChronicles.com. Please subscribe to my newsletter on Substack. Just go to mppelliser.com for a link. I want to thank you for being part of my audience, and I think you are all wonderful. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good, I hope. I'm doing good. Kind of crazy. If you hear weird noises, by the way, I've got I've got my dogs in here with me. I didn't put them on the porch, and I had one chew bone, one, and I've got eight dogs. So it was a mistake. After after I did, I was like, "What did I do?" But uh, usually, it, it becomes like you know, keep away, and they everybody wants the the one bone. And so if you hear weird noises or thumping or stuff like that. They're all right here waiting, of course, like children to make noise at the most inappropriate time. And outside of that, let's see, uh, everything is hot, hot weather, like everything else. Um, let's see. No, everything is good. Sometimes, you know what? There's a lot to be said for everything is normal as usual. You know, sometimes excitement. What was it that Louis Lamour said? Adventure is a, the romantic word for trouble. But anyway, let's get on to the good part. The good part has to... Oh, and by the way, before I forget, I am going to release my other book this year. So make sure to sign up for my newsletter on Substack. Because again, besides uh, the articles and all the announcements and the giveaways, I am going to announce when I release the book. And I'm going to do a giveaway on Amazon on that. So please make sure if you haven't done so already, and everything is free on my uh, Substack uh, newsletter. See? Shh. Be quiet, you guys. So... Don't forget. Now, let's again, let's get, get on to the good part. The good part has to do with who the guest is. This gentleman's been on Stories of the Supernatural before. His name is Christian McLeod, and he is the director and lead investigator of ACAPS, which stands for American Cryptid and Paranormal Society. He has over 25 years of experience investigating cryptid and paranormal activities. And ACAPS is based on the principles of rational science with the use of the scientific method approach as the basis to every research endeavor. Um, okay. Shh. Hey, no more sound effects. Uh, he's knowledgeable about the fields of the occult, UFOs, forbidden archaeology, the Freemasons, the Knights Templar, secret societies, and many other governmental cover-up allegations and conspiracy theories. He's been on Coast to Coast uh, with George Norrie. Uh, Joshua P. Warren, uh, speaking of strange podcasts, Vic Cundiff, Stogman Encounters Radio, and Bigfoot Eyewitness Radio, and many other media outlets. Bubba, Bubba. No, yes. And uh, he's also one of a very popular and award winning post. He is the host of the popular and award winning podcast, the American Cryptid and Paranormal Society podcast, Fringe Investigations. There we go. Help me welcome him. How are you doing today, Christian? I'm just excited to be here again, Marlene. It's, I always love doing your shows because you're just a class act. And it's just thank nice you. To, nice to hear. I love your voice. You got that raspy, you. hello, darling, kind of. Yes. Voice. And believe it or not, it's like, no, I've never smoked. I never smoked. I don't drink. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, yelled you a get, lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because I'm glad I mentioned it because this is over that, that one. Show. It's like after I did it, I was like, oh, you know, and everybody, you know, they're like children, they squabble over things. But anyway, that we were talking about this already before we started recording. And, um, you know, we were saying that now that, you know, things are opening up and everything. A lot of paranormal and cryptid investigations are starting to, everything's warming up and shows and everything. And um, 
what have you been up to, Christian, as far as uh, any investigations or anything that you've got planned? Well, we thank you for asking. And again, Marlene, thanks for remembering me and having me back on the show. It's oh it's God. honestly, I, I love doing your show. You're just a, a class act, thank and you. that's it's uh, it's yeah, and it's just you. You're constantly at a, a at a limit where people should be trying to reach, and it's it's very impressive thank to you. see your reaction. I just. Oh now that I'm done with that, but yeah, it's okay. Like, Flattery will get you everywhere. Yes, go everywhere. Yeah, you have um, no idea. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> ma'am. We have we are literally I'm just Marley, I'm embarrassed to say this. We're a year behind, a year and a half yes. behind our research. I we are so it. inundated with cases, both paranormal and cryptid. I've got more cryptid cases now than just sightings. In fact, I got another two today. Uh, really? off the hotline. Yeah, it's uh one eight hundred three two nine four eight five one. And it is just mind boggling all the activity that's going on out there. And I think a lot of that has to do with what we were talking about earlier uh, before we started recording is uh, it's, you know, people are on that two year hiatus yes. and I think everything in the woods was on a two year hiatus mm -hmm. and they kind of got used to us not being there. And now they're kind of back to doing what they wanted to do. And I think we're going to see some altercations shortly. I think we're right. probably going to have more and more reports and I think it's going to be harder and harder to re uh, repudiate a lot of them. Uh, and that, and that also goes with the paranormal reports. We've gotten tons in a day. Yes. You know, I, I work for Joshua P. Warren. I do the haunted Asheville tours on the weekend and, uh, on Tuesday nights and Friday and Saturdays. And the amount of stories we get from just the guests now, everyone, okay. it's everyone it used to be maybe one person at 10, one person at 20, but now it's, it's everywhere. I mean, it's, it's just like the, the veil between the paranormal world and our world is right. just so thin now. And I, I think that has a lot to do with the, not only the energy out there, but it, you know, it has to do with the effect that, you know, I think everyone's in a, I, I can say this for me. I think everyone I know is in a weird place. Well, sometimes I think of that because I've heard exactly what you're describing. And I'm thinking one of two things, is it higher stress levels that everybody's getting all over, you know, but, or was it that people being stuck at home or not being able to go where they normally would, let's say out, uh, even if let's say you weren't working from home, but still it was mm -hmm. for these that just people are paying more attention to things. You see what I'm saying? Because I, you know, I, I just probably it. Cause you know, honestly, I, I think that's actually a really good point, Marlene. Cause you are, I think people are paying more attention Yeah. because you know, they're in that, you know, you're in your, your house or you're in 1200 square feet of a space for a year. You know, you're going to start paying attention. I think look at all the home renovations that went on. So I mean, oh obviously, God. obviously they're paying attention to things. So I think that that probably is something that, yes, you know, you yes. learn behavior. So yeah. they're going outside more and they're paying more attention. Uh, oh, you, you know, know we, yeah, 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 and, yeah. And as a matter of fact, I have a, a, a my boss sent me. Now, this is my boss. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm in real life. I'm a school teacher. I teach middle school. And so people say, aren't you scared of ghosts and demons? I said, oh, God, no. At any given time. I've got 48 12 year old girls mad at me because I'm making them do something over or write something. So I don't fear that kind of thing. So it's like, it's yeah, just, if, 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 if that doesn't scare you, nothing will, right? I mean, so I mean, I always, I joke on my tours and say Satan could appear right in front of me and I'd be looking at him, asking him to light my cigar. And he'd be like, oh, <laughs> middle school teacher, right? Like, yeah. yeah, I know. Like, it's like, sorry, that. That's sorry it. man. Thanks. You're doing the Lord's work. God bless. And boom, <laughs> nothing phases you at this yeah, point. Nothing. It, it doesn't. And I, I, uh, I work with some very incredible people, but my boss, I, you know, I don't have permission to use her name, but she, she's just, she's one of these ladies who's just playing cool. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. She's just, she's kind of a pain, but I love her. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things. And, uh, she actually sent me pictures <laughs> of really? some of the best tracks I've seen in about two years. Really? And she goes, is this anything? And I'm like, good and God. And where is this? Did she, she, did she go somewhere? Was oh yeah. It... She went hiking with her family. I mean, she's, she's got a real tight family unit and they always do stuff. I mean, she's, uh -huh. she's like, if, if you wanted like the super mom, this is the mother you want. Okay. Like she's, she's like that one. Like you, her kid can call her in the middle of the day. I want French fries. You know, be one of these. And she's like, you don't need French fries. Five minutes later, she's driving. Get I, know. Yeah, she's one of those I know. I know. I know what that's she's, like. Yeah. She's just, but she's like the, the most overprotective, super loving, like, I mean, you know. Yeah, she's a good uh, mom. She's the uh, best mom you could have. I mean, it's kind of mom everyone should have, and there'd be no problems in the world. But she's, like, sending me these pictures, and I'm like, where'd you get this? And she's I don't know. And then uh, she goes, we're just on a hike, and her husband's got, like, a size 14 shoe, and he's putting it right. next to this thing, and his, his foot's just dwarfed. And it's a legit, you can see the minotaur, you can see the pre, you know, the break and everything. I was going to say it's a barefoot yeah. print. Oh, yeah, it's a barefoot print, and you can see it's, like, boom. Uh, there's right. the mid tarsal break and everything. And I'm like, no, that's a legit print. I, I don't care what anyone says that is legit. Plus it's, 
you know, it's it's like an inch and a half in the mud, and where his mm-hmm. is barely even. It's one. Of, it's like one of those perfect things. And I mean, that just I just got that randomly from my boss while she's hiking with her family on the weekend. I mean, but that's what's nice. been going on. Yeah, uh, it's just that kind of stuff all over the place. Uh, right, and 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 it's yeah. like, and and again, I I'm gonna that also people are looking more. You know, how can I say mm-hmm. because there's been more discussion about cryptids and dogmen and Bigfoot. Whereas before people just, they, they wouldn't have noticed it. it. It wouldn't have like come up on their radar. Now she's looking right. down and she's seeing, hey, wait a minute. That exactly. Like a footprint. What, Not what? like that. And, you know, let's compare. I mean, you know, plus she's got to deal with me all the time. I mean, like when you walk into my room, first thing you see is like, I've got this huge square and compasses from the Freemasons, like in uh-huh. my room. And then you've got two, uh, three by five Bigfoot posters of, uh, of Patty and uh, Mr. Patty, as I call them. Uh, must, you know, from, must, yeah, that's right. Because everybody forgets that that was a female. Yeah. And well, yeah, well, I call well as and as most things, the female. I call the female the boss. So it's either <laughs> Patty or the boss. And uh, yeah, you got. And then when they did the other one from that, remember when they digitized Patty and showed you what she looked like? I've got those. Yes. They're, they're I, I think they're two by two and a half by three. I mean, they're huge. And they're first thing you see when you walk in a room. And then there's like fly fish and stuff. And then like my kids are enamored with Vegas, so they decided they were gonna place like where they're going to put slot machines one day when they do their own play it's just you know uh but uh it's it's a very interesting room and then uh i'm i this is going to sound ridiculous that sounds like such a cool but classroom i do sock puppet theater for <laughs> historical Let events me tell you and i and we got the socks and the kids make their socks and their puppets and they have to be an historical event and they've got to recite it as the puppet and i've got it. a couple of girls i call them the reds my reds uh these two redhead girls i've got they're they're, they're brilliant they're hilarious but uh, they decided to do the point of view from Paul Revere's horse. Wow. See, I love that. I so think they've that got the horse so sock puppet that they made. And they're talking about how heavy Paul Revere is and how he falls asleep. <laughs> Paul's put on weight or something. And he's talking about how fat he is, you know, but it's just, it's brilliant. It's hilarious. And I then I've got that. one of my guys, he's brilliant. This kid's brilliant. I'm probably going to work for him one day. But uh, he decided to do uh, King George's <laughs> speech. So he's got this royal wow. sock puppet, this regal sock puppet. And uh, it's just funny because you put all that in there, but still the the most imposing things on the whole room are you you're doing all this stuff behind like these two huge Bigfoot posters, <laughs> and I've got like you know the UFO I mean, believe and all that. You stuff. You sound so, like that kind of teacher that people when they grow up they remember that one teacher you know that you have a couple of teachers yeah that you remember because man they were great and I really learned and that, believe it or not what you're describing you do learn. As a kid, whatever it is, uh, whatever the subject, my whatever. kids all know their bill of rights. They know their ten amendment. They know the ten amendments, the bill of rights, the preamble. Yeah. They they don't walk out of there without knowing. And, and I'm a firm yeah. believer in that. And I, it kind of bugs me that we don't really teach that. I uh, know that at one time, what was it, civics? Yeah, and civics. Was- and, but like my kids, uh, they don't. Want, I teach them how to write. And I've got sixth graders. Think about this, Marlene. I've got sixth graders that write in APA. Wow. They know how to cite. They know how to research. Excellent. Twelve point font, double. Spe- I mean, they they do. It's all APA. And I teach them that from day one. And that's anything you turn into Mr. Max got to be APA. And uh, isn't that they, great? They recite, huh? Yeah, okay. That, 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 yeah. I, I used to have a, a friend of a, a friend of a friend, but you know, one of those things and she had been doing journalism and then she goes, she stopped, she went to teaching and she started working at, there was a community college. She goes, I'm going to go into teach there. And I remember one time we were having dinner and she, and, she, and I asked her, well, what do you teach? And she goes, well, I, uh, when people come in and they graduate from high school, you know, you got a test yeah. to go into, this is community college, by the way. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. And she says, these, these are the kids that we couldn't even place them at the lowest level. And she was explaining to me how they didn't know how to write a paragraph. They, they, it was like, they don't. They, it was like, she goes, she was like, she goes, Marlene, I'm not, I'm not setting the bar high. I'm, I'm not being like overly, you know, she goes, these kids they barely, they're, there's no grammar. There's no punctuation. There's like nothing. She, you know, she, she couldn't believe it. They don't even write cursive anymore, Marlene. That's been gone that. for about I, a decade. I don't understand that. I, I don't understand it because I'm going to, I remember in second grade, we start, yep. I, they started teaching us how to write. On the three line paper. Remember the three line the paper? Three line. And then after that, you had to do everything in cursive. Yeah. You could not do anything in, uh, see. in regular mm-hmm. print. You know, and it makes me laugh because, like, I've I've got my kids be the first to tell you I have sloppy handwriting, mm-hmm. but it's much nicer when I write cursive. The problem is, sure. is I got two kids in my class that can read it. There you go. So, and yeah. it's like you know they want everything digital. They want this. Uh, I'm not, I don't like digital everything. I want to show a book. I you know I've got I bring yes. in my own art. I bring in artifacts from the Revolutionary War, Civil War. 
you know, things we find along with, you know, an American Crypt and Paranormal Society. Believe it or not, a lot of things we uh, one of our logo is, you know, rediscovering lost legends. Right. And uh, a okay. lot of things we just rediscover is like we'll get stories like, you know, local. Hey, you know, grandpa allegedly buried, you know, 14 jars of gold here. And yes. Blah, blah, blah. Every once in a while we find stuff. Wow. You know, so I, I bring that in and we give it to the owner, of course, and they'll usually give us one or two. And it's really, you know, it's it's just it's a momentum. It's it, But right. it's something I show the kids because like, to me, that's living history. Of course. You know, so I like and as being a history teacher, I like showing them the history. And, uh, you know, and exactly. I'm, a, I'm a I've got a real nerd kind of side to me too because I, uh, <laughs> i'm a huge collector of uh, uss constitution stuff okay like i found out my great grandfather in 27 helped do the overhaul when uh they, they brought her back so ever wow. since i've always been so i've like i've got a whole wall in my house is all dedicated constitution stuff and Isn't i've got great? another one that's all revolutionary war stuff and then i've got yes. a, of course the the cryptid bigfoot wall that's kind of yep. three walls but and you know what it's <laughs> really interesting though and what was it? You know how they say the to the victor goes the spoils. Right. I say to the victor goes the right to write history how you want it. Oh yeah, history. Yeah. I always tell people history is ugly. People, yeah. history is ugly, but you know what, Marlene, you can't rewrite it. No, Until well, we all get time machines, go back. I would rather have the truth it. and have it like and yeah. that what you just said the Revolutionary War. You know, I don't get me wrong, I agree, but people don't realize there was a lot of farmers that didn't want to get involved in the war or give money or give food. Thousands, to the yeah, soldiers. there was there was thousands and thousands of them. There's people they like just wanted to be like, let me farm. You want money? What do you mean? You want to what for the yeah. who? Well, we yeah, have exactly. to. We need uniforms. Yeah, but I'm not going to give you money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People don't realize that. That's what they had to deal with. I mean, remember, yes. there's no taxing. There was no tax. Yeah, there was nothing. Yeah. They had to. I mean, these guys were funding all this stuff pretty much on their own. Exactly. Like, yeah, they, I want you to fight. Yeah. Go and fight. But what do you mean you need yeah. money for what? To feed the, the rations for the soldiers? Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You know, people don't realize that um, people didn't like, you know, what, what was happening with England and all that other stuff. But at the same time, they didn't want to give anything. It was know. a very difficult decision. And remember, South Carolina, if it was an all unanimous, they weren't going to vote for it. You know, I mean, they, they, South Carolina, they if South Carolina had abstained from voting, it wouldn't have been unanimous. Georgia was pretty right. much out because they were dealing with the British anyway. But keep this in mind. If you look at the original Declaration of Independence, Jefferson outlawed slavery right then and there. Yes. And a lot of people, you know, I, you got to hand it back then. Can you imagine how things would have been different if South Carolina had ratified that and they just refused to? That was the one they were the right. one holdout. So, you know, it's just I, I say explain that to the students. I'm like, there's just one thing would have happened. Look at that. It's right. like that it's little butterfly. It's a butterfly effect. Some things that, thing. that the right. turn of events on the one thing. Right. I call them fixed know, points in history. And that's just something I call them. I call them fixed points in history. And what I say to my yes. students is the reason why I call it this is because if this had changed, then there would have yes. been so many ripple effects. History would not be the same. So it's I can't even imagine what history would be like. So it's a fixed point in history. It cannot be changed. Right. No matter exactly. what we want to do, you can't change it because the ripple effects would be disastrous we don't know right so that's, that's what, what, what would, I would be it. that you know I, I i'm sure you've seen some of these sci-fi fantasy novels with alternate historical oh, you yeah. know like you said this one event doesn't yeah. happen and then what what's the future mm -hmm. comes out but yeah there's a but again uh yeah when you when you <clears throat> when you look into some of the things that happen historically like you said it's not pretty or people are people you know people sometimes even though they're important, sometimes we glamorize them, but they were oh, yeah. human beings with their foibles and, yeah. you know, their own I mean, family no one, stuff. And No one's got a clean, no one's perfect. No, 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 no. I mean, but everyone's I, got dirt but you laundry, have to you know? say that it's like, um, how can I say it? But despite it, they were, how can I say they were products of their times, but they still accomplished but, stuff. But I that's guess. what, you know, but honestly, Marlene, that's 100% what they were. They were yeah. products of their environment and their times. Yeah. And people, you know, you can't judge someone. 250 years ago for the way their life because it was a whole different ball game back then sure right or wrong it was different our yeah. morals are a lot different than theirs were they might come can you imagine what they'd say if they saw what we were doing today oh if they saw how the declaration of independence and the bill of rights are being treated uh, or let me this, tell you. if they looked at the political system right now they'd be like what they the all the things they fought and died for they'd be like are you kidding me this is what, what let me tell you something you don't even have to go yeah. that far back yeah. you have to go back as maybe 40 50 60 years well you know what's funny is i'm the older i get and i i can't believe i'm saying that yeah like, oh, the older i yeah. get the more i appreciate like the 
the World War II generation. Because mm-hmm. those guys were just, you know, like Harry Truman. I mean, that's the only, that's the last politician I can ever remember saying, hey, the buck stops with me. I'm it. Boom. The end. Right. Exactly. You know, because no one does that anymore. No one's like honest anymore about it. Yeah. Everybody's like real. Like, They're looking for scapegoats. Scapegoats or how can I say this? Well, I'll make a, I'll say I'm going to do something yeah. and I kind of do it, but it really it ends up being nothing. You know, how can I say, what, what, what am I looking for? The, um, you know, that, that, uh, that the moment that it, yeah. on the media, it sounds good, but then, oh, yeah. okay. You know, okay. That sounds great. You know, did you get that picture? You know, did you capture that clip? Okay. We're good. Okay. Right, and then, everybody's yeah. worried and no, but nothing comes of it. No, it's a lie. Yeah. No decisiveness. And I, I think that a lot of, I, I personally, the, the, I'm going to segue out of the paranormal and we'll come back into it. I think that's a lot of people sometimes are hungering for it. People that are older. How's that? <laughs> you well, know, yeah, not but that when you were you're older, you know, I, I am not what I would call old. No, I know. Neither am I, but, but my, still. My, my students refer to me as the old man. Some of them say other things. <laughs> old crippled man, old foolish man, old crazy man. You know, I get old, but old's in there. It's usually, yeah. or they tell me I got a forehead that just keeps getting bigger. Uh, you, know, you know, stuff <laughs> like that. I love them to death, but, you know, the kids, they don't lie. They tell the truth. Sure. Uh, you know, it, it may be hurtful, but they're still telling it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, but yeah. but the one thing I realize is, you know, how important it is to have a country that uh, you can count on. And I've been all over the world. I know you have, too. And when yeah. people see how things go in different countries, they, you know, I, I, I listen. It's part of our system to criticize the system. That's the way it's designed. And God sure, bless it. That's course. the way it's supposed to be. I might have a different opinion than you and you have a different opinion than me, but that does not mean you and I can't be friends. Absolutely. And before the- it, it yeah. was, it would be like that. But I'll tell you what. How's this? And the other day, well, it was a couple of weeks ago, and I said, "Man, this illust- just this illustration really points out, you know, now you and I've seen it, and you know, I've seen people go shopping in their pajamas for the love of Mike." I Dude, I, I, Marlene, I had kids coming to school in their pajamas. I'm and I look at that, and I'm like, "That's a pajama. Is that a yeah. pajama?" And then they somewhere what was it? Somebody did a meme, and it showed this. Um, it was an advertisement. I think I want to say there was a, and I don't know if they had them where you were in Florida at that time, Grand Union. It was a supermarket. I remember and that, they, yeah. And it was like, this predated, this was a, I think the only other thing was the Winn-Dixies, but this, this was, and I want to say the cartoon, no, not the, not the cartoon. It was like an illustration an advertisement from either late fifties, early sixties. And it shows the parents with the kids going about into shopping there. And here mom and mom is dressed in a dress. The kids are dressed like, shoes clothes the dad same thing he's even you know like in other words you would never ever everyone used to dress better think of going just to do gross i get the, the point is grocery shopping okay you were dressed you were dressed you know i remember getting on my first flight to chicago to go visit my uncle uh-huh. and this is back when you could still smoke on planes but everyone yes. everyone was wearing suits everyone yes. was wearing dresses yeah. I mean, I, I remember everyone gets, and it was like, it was like, you know, people just dressed up for everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. and now it's. Right. Luck. And it's now it's like, you're going to, you're going with fuzzy pajamas and in, in the, what you would call it in slippers. Yeah. Slip. I don't get that. I don't. And I'm just, looking at that and I'm like, you know. To me, that's just I not, I don't get that. Um, I know, don't either. I don't. And you know what? Again, people, and I'm, and I try to like, like you said, I'm not old and I, try, and I you know how you do introspection like am i oh yeah am i Definitely. criticizing this i don't get it and i'm like no nah, bs i would never have done this you know and there's yeah. times you know when you you know when you pull on a pair of jeans and it but still it's like man i'm not gonna about to look like i call it the I just, like got out of bed yeah <laughs> and, and um and uh you know you know rolled out and just like hey i guess i need to go pick up some milk and i'll just just take you know i'll milk. just go on my jammies yeah in my jammies <laughs> My my hoodie, my jam, well, hoodie. My if you're hoodies, lucky. hoodies. Yeah. I, God, oh, I don't even. Care. <laughs> it's like stuff like that, and I'm saying because of what you were saying, as far as you know, older generations, if they were around to see now, they'd be like, "Oh my God." <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it used to. Yeah, yeah, it, but things change, and you it know, does. Things change, and, and that's the way it's meant to be. Things are meant to evolve, change. You know, right? But what exactly. we used to think was hip in the '80s is coming back, which blows me away. Well, I think and, a lot of it's nostalgia. I think for a lot do- of fedoras, has- fedoras are coming back. Thank God. Yeah. I've, you know, I've always been where I've, that's, it's maybe it's the Indiana Jones effect. I call that the Indiana Jones effect. Yes. I was doing that. You know, what's funny, Marlene. And I, I'm going to segue, but I was, uh, I just got done doing the, uh, 
the the Marion North Carolina Bigfoot event, and okay. uh, I was the, the opening speaker, and I opened up, and uh, I was opening, and Ron Moorhead was the closer. Okay. And I I was sitting there, and there's this the audience. I mean, it was packed. It was just it was such a nice. Uh, I will say this: uh, the guy that runs the the place, uh, John Bruner, the guy who started the Bigfoot Festival. Guy's a genius, but nicest guy in the world. But he's got us all in this auditorium at, at the local community college or the local Votech. And they, the place was packed. It was, I think there was 32 standing room only. And we're sitting there. And the first thing I notice, I'm looking, you can pick the Bigfoot guys that we're all wearing a vest for some reason. We all got okay. some kind of fedora on. <laughs> and we're all like, there's just this look. And I'm thinking to myself, I even mentioned, I'm like, now I don't know, because Ron Moorhead predates Indiana Jones. You know, he's yeah. the... You know, the Sierra sounds that was in the, the, the late early 70s, I think. Yes. And mm -hmm. so I don't know if we got this culmination. It's just I don't know if he started. So I mean, I'm even asking him, like, Ron, did you start this look? Because, I, you know, I mean, it's like it's one of these things. And Steven Spielberg see a picture of you yeah. and said, hey, that's the look I want. Well, you know, it's funny because and, and here's I'm embarrassed to say this, but I'm not embarrassed to say it. it's one of those things. He's showing my age. I still have an Indiana Jones poster yes. in my room, like, but it's in the frame and everything. I mean, that was always. I mean, yeah. it's indie. I mean, it's indie. You can't you can't disrespect indie. <laughs> no, let me tell you, that was such a, I can remember when that movie came out, and yeah. it was like, what a great movie! It was like from beginning to end. It was such yeah. a fantastic movie. It jump you started know? the cinema back, you know. Jump started the adventure. Yes, right? yes. I mean, it was like, and as a matter of fact, you know, they just released his fifth movie, which is, you know. I heard it's not that great, but I know, I know, and it was like, you know what? And it's I'm going to say this. I'm real, still going to see just, it. It, it, oh yeah, I am too. I am too. Um, that they were talking about, you know, that they, 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 you know, what they, they mean, him. age him, you know, yeah, make, they, make him younger yeah. to do some of the parts. And I was reading that eventually, with these uh, computer graphics, actors will not be necessary. Well, you know? I just, I, you know, it's funny. It says, does, doesn't Shaq own like a company that does the the uh, imaging, image licensing? Or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not well, sure. Anyway, I, I saw something where they said they can let you could have a movie, you could do a, a Star Wars with John Wayne in it right now. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That the computer graphics are so yeah. realistic, so good as far as that you would say, okay, this is like you said, this is John Wayne, you yeah. know, out in uh Tatooine or something, you know, whatever. I mean, how awesome would it have the Duke being a Jedi? <laughs> Come on. I, exactly. <laughs> how, how cool. There you go, Pilgrim. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And this is, and I was thinking to, my, and I saw this a while back, a couple of years back, yeah. that when they were doing those, um, oh my God, what do you call them? There's a name, there's a name for it. And um, and I was thinking, you know what? If I was an actor, I'd be thinking, man, I'm gonna be without a job pretty soon. Because well, you know, yeah, it's but that's where everything. It's technology. Well, I just mm -hmm. saw this article: his first automated, fully non-human functioning McDonald's. That you, Have you know, seen that? No, I haven't. I have not seen that. Yeah, well, I, and I can't. I don't know if it's in the USA. I don't know if it's another country. I just saw this clip, and it just showed it's all robots. Okay. The food comes out like faster. I mean, it's like they do so, I, somehow they get it done like the best way. Right. And it's, there's not a human in the building. There's no one. You know what? And and but see, the other day I read an article that they were that the uh, one of these associations, restaurant associations. That you know that, that basically they just look at trends and what people mm -hmm. like overall different, not any type of food, just restaurants. And they were saying that a bunch of restaurants had instituted ordering with QR codes that people do not like it. I don't like it. People, I don't do like, not going, like I don't it. do self checkout. I won't yeah. do it. If I'm they paying like, the same uh -uh. money, if I'm paying the same money, someone else is going to ring me out. Right. No, they I, were this I'm thing even at restaurants them. and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, they were. And uh, I went to a restaurant the other day where instead of the menu, what they gave you was a tablet. All right. And basically you exactly like a tablet, you know, you scroll. Yeah. Or you, you know, go back, you know, left or right. And then you pick and you, you know, basically and you chose it. You didn't order from it, but it basically was an interactive menu where you looked mm -hmm. at what you wanted. And then the waitress came and took your order. And part of me was like, this is not bad because if, you know, you don't have to reproduce a new menu if you change something. Right. Or if you have a it's, special of the day. I, I, that part is like, I'm okay with that. No, that makes but, sense. Yeah. 
but the QR code thing, they were saying that mm, people are not like that, nah, not having it. Well, a lot so, of people, you know, that are older still don't, you know, there's, there's a lot yeah. of people that still don't know how to use a cell phone properly or, know you know, that. whatever. I know that. So that's, that's the problem you have there. I mean, it's, you yeah. can't just throw, you know, it's like, if I go to Starbucks, I still like to talk to someone about, Hey, you know, I want it done this way. That's sure. not all the time. There, that yeah, option the people, be people the don't, yeah. you know, we've had automated <clears throat> answering systems for what, yeah. 20 years already. Tell me if there's nothing so frustrating if you're trying to get to a department or ask somebody for something mm -hmm. and it takes you through every, no, hit exactly. two, then hit five. By the time you get to a live person, if you get to, you're just like, all right. You know, like you're like, I'm really upset just because you made well, me go through all these steps. It's like booking, it's like booking airlines. And, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going down to visit my family and it's all online, which is fine until yeah. some happens or it doesn't give you the yes. discount you're supposed to get. And then blah, blah, yeah. blah. And right. hey, I want to take my golf clubs. How do I add that on there? And it's one of those things. You know, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna segue back into the paranormal because I'm yeah. gonna tell you, with all these things about advanced technology, this Chat GPT, and you know AI, and you know AI is you know gonna. I think that the opposite effect of this is the human beings, the mystery, the lure of the paranormal and cryptids. I think that that's there's a special attraction. Because I think that's humans, yeah, it's nice to have the technology, but part of us yearns for something that is not that precise, you know, the mm -hmm. mystery of what's going on around us where, you know, like, hey, I, I, I don't want to see it on a, on a screen or on a monitor. I want to go out there and I want to go explore or try to find what I can or exactly what you were describing that you were doing with your with your students. Mm -hmm. um, I think that part of the human beings of our nature likes that, you know, unless you, you're agoraphobic or something like that. But that, that I think is the, a, a reaction against technology. Well, I think, you know, deep down people are still people, you know, we're yeah. not machines. No, we're know, not. I, I see the difference between kids that are homeschooled and, and uh, you know, they're in front of a computer all the time. Here's an yeah. example. We, we, you know, it's beautiful weather out here, beautiful weather out here. And the yeah. kids are doing the end of year testing and they're, you know, they're, uh, they work their fannies off. They're they're getting everything done. You know, it's they've learned a lot. They've got to remember it all. They've got the EOGs to do, and you know they've got a lot of bent up energy. So yes. I I take everyone outside, go outside, get some fresh air. What is wrong? Get some fresh air. You got nothing to get some fresh air. Play some football. Throw the yes. ball around. You know, and uh, you know, play some four square. Just you know, we chat with your friends. But then you see half of them just sit down and start playing video games on their phones, and it's like, right. what are you doing? Get up and get some fresh. I told you, sit. Up. Nah, we're not doing this. You can do yes. that anywhere. And exactly. It's like, and oh no, it's that like, there's a there's yeah. abs absolutely an addictive. My nephew's like that. To it is yes. There, yeah, my there my is. Uh, my eleven year old nephew's like that. I bought him a yeah. football, and he's a great. He's he's actually I honestly believe he's 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 got real athletic ability because uh, mm -hmm. his dad is you know his dad was a uh, uh, played college ball, and uh, he's just he's got real athletic ability. But he's just so I love him to death. But he's so lazy. He doesn't want to do anything except sit and yeah. look at a computer screen. Yeah. And the you know, kid, you know, and but you know, you got to coach him out. And then when you get him out there, he's having a good time. And you know, an hour go by, he's not even thinking about that. And then, mm -hmm. second the football's down, boom, it's back to the iPad. You know, oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's very, everything. I've seen that. That's I've seen generation. that a lot. Yeah. And um, I remember there was once upon a time, I mean, my own kids, when they were out there, I would have to like tell them. And, and this was at the beginning when, when there was, you know, when the video games were coming in, you know, like mm -hmm. Mario Brothers and yeah. stuff like that. But still, they would play with. But no, they were. I mean, I had to tell them, you gotta be, you gotta first check in with me during the day. And by the time the the street lights, you guys have got to be home because yep. they'd be running around with neighborhood kids all over the place. We, didn't, you know, I, I don't even remember. Like we were doing summer. Unless I had chores to do, I was out skateboarding with my friends, hanging yeah. out, yeah, doing something. And then when I, then when I was driving, by you know, by the time I was driving, I had a job, yeah, and yes. I was hanging out, you know, just you know, but it, it just normal kid stuff, yeah. And uh, I just don't see how these kids are going to do that. I mean, right. if they, they got to get away from that screen. Yes, you know? yes, and you know, and, and the sad thing is, is that's you know, we issue Chromebooks in schools. You yeah, know, my I kids know don't. Half of my kids couldn't turn in a paper right now if they wanted to let me throw that out there first mm -hmm. but they you know they've got these chromebooks and they're just everything they want everything done on a chromebook and you know they don't want a paper trail they don't want to use paper anymore i'm sorry sometimes you need paper yes you know you that's gotta that you gotta learn how to do that 
And let me tell you something, something that you said earlier. People must be thinking, are these guys going to talk about cryptids or paranormal? We'll get to yeah. it. Hold on. But you said, you remember what you were talking about as far as books, print, you know, printed right. versus, let's say, a Kindle edition. Right. Or, you know what? If a book goes out of print and you've got a copy of it, now if you if you're relying on something that the only source is uh basically a, a computer some if they so they want to yank it off that's it that that mm -hmm. information is gone bye bye yeah you know whereas if you have the book the actual book even if it goes out of print you have it well i mean you know and and a good representation of that even on the paranormal side is uh you know i i'm a i've researched the occult for many, mm -hmm. many years. Not not that I'm into the occult, but I've researched it. I'm fascinated by different cultures and things. That's just part of my okay. personality. And it's just fascinating how different cultures operate. But think about this. If their grand grimoire goes out of print or if their mm -hmm. holy text goes out of print or if their legends goes out, they have nothing. Sure. That's why they've got like some have I've actually seen some books that are a couple hundred years old, handwritten. Yes. Uh, and, and and it's because of that. They can't get them anywhere else. And you they know can't. It, or, it, or what, what? What is it that they call it? The Mandela effect. Yeah, the Mandela I think effect. Think a Mandela effect, or say, or you know, if yeah. you're looking at a book that, uh, that that's only available not in print, but anybody could go in and say, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna redact it. Well, not redact it. We're gonna change this wording in the book. You know, here and yeah, there. But, they, but see, people don't realize they do that. Yes, um, I've got. You know, uh, even in this, I talk about this, uh, when Lewis and Clark, 1804, when Lewis and Clark were going westward, you know, it, they were told point blank, you were, we want you to match up with as native, many Native American tribes you can, mm -hmm. and it's not for any other reason, for your own safety. And they're like, what are you talking about? Uh, you're going to run into things, you won't be understanding them, they're going to teach you about them. All right? They were going to run into the hairy man. It wasn't a matter of, uh, it was, of what, it was when. All right? That's right. why they wanted all that Native American, you know, folklore mythos with them because that would tell them how to deal with it i still to this day every investigation we even do the mm -hmm. first thing i do is let's look and see what the native american folklore says about it right you know, when you got civilization that's been here twenty thousand years and we've been here 300 i'm gonna go with the people that have been here twenty thousand sure. years they've been there done that i got the t they're the experts i yes. don't usually say anything about it. i i never ever have called myself a crypto paranormal expert the only people i will ever reserve that title for are the native americans uh in this country and because you know what's really funny is that you look at when you run into these legends, it's really funny. Mm -hmm. This is what I, I realized about these Native Americans, tribes, whatever, that were in a certain area. When they identified either if there was something going on in the land or if there was a cryptid, mm -hmm. they just would state that it would be like, don't go there. You they know were, what I'm saying? They, they would never they say, let's book. go hunt it or let's yeah. capture it or trap it. They'd be like, don't go to that. That, that is a strictly European. <laughs> right. Don't European go to that concept. mountain because that mountain, whatever fill in the blank, whatever. Yeah. But they were like, okay, this is, you know, okay, something happens there or something, or we see something or that area belongs to the so-and-so, whatever creature. Yep. Don't go there. That's it. That's how they resolve the problem. What is that? Leave it alone. Give them the, okay. You know what? We'll, 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 yeah. we'll yeah. pack up and bag. You know, we're out. Uh, yep. I mean, that's the way, but again, you know, they survived 20,000 years. Probably yes. one of the best cultures ever. And, you know, and I don't even want to get started on what happened. Well, no, but, but that it was one of those things where, um, it was enough to know that, you know, what we could, if let's, let's just, we could exist, coexist. How's that? All right. Yeah. But they wrote the book on coexist. I mean, they were, right. they didn't even have words for ownership. I mean, how beautiful is that? Yeah. Yeah. No. And it wasn't like where we, we got, we, you know, we got to find and And a lot of people think, well, you know, um, no, how can I say it? They, they didn't have that. Oh that desire like i have to have the proof how's that <laughs> you no, know because if they're yeah but see they listen they respected their elders they had mm -hmm. that whole hierarchy and if if you're, the elder said this is a bad thing okay yeah. i'm not going to question it because he says a bad thing that's good enough for me you know right and that's yeah. it if mom or dad said don't go out there's dangerous okay i ain't yes. going out there's dangerous no right. so i mean you know that's the way it is these days you know and i you know i'm guilty of this too because i'm i'm the stupid guy you know we're in I remember video uh, or we were recording a TV show for the discovery channel uh -huh. or the travel channel. I'm sorry. And, uh, it was, it was me and the, uh, the host of the show and the version that came here, I wasn't in the version that went out in England. Uh, I was in, 
Okay. And and what had happened was apparently, from what I understand, I could be wrong here, but from what I was told, we actually got too much stuff on tape and they didn't want to release it to the audience here. Really? We had ultras, infrasound, we had all kinds of stuff. My point is, I was there was so much stuff here, but if you look back and 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 you you start to uh, research what the Native American said would happen first when you have an encounter with something. It was yes. literally textbook. It was boom, 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 boom. Right. And it, and it's, you know, and to me, that's like, um, let me ask you. And, and uh, I mean, I, I know that a lot of these tribes, depending, of course, what part of the country they were in, did they, did you ever hear about any stories where they, had they had encounters that were how can i tell you that were negative how's that yes i mean right. and the cherokee uh they they called the aggressive bigfoot or the mm-hmm. janasquas the nunya way and okay. that was the you know that was basically the mythos for what would become later on the boogeyman uh or the booger man and that's okay. that's where they all came from and that's all like even if you're if you're in the true south like you know like i said i'm a north cac that's why right. i call it uh if you talk to someone who's been here a while, they refer to like the outdoor lights as booger lights. That's okay. how saturated that is in the culture here. Okay. Uh, now, see, a lot of people don't go by Bigfoot or Sasquatch because they didn't grow up. You hairy man, chicken man, wild man, well, you know, wild man of this, wild man of that, you know, whatever. But it's usually followed by that or, or you know, you know, lost man, something like that. There's, well, let's put it this way. There's over 150 different names for Bigfoot just in the continental tribal United States alone. Wow. Uh, think about that. And that's just probably the tip of the iceberg. I'm sure there's a hundred, sure. hundreds, hundreds more, but that think about that. You're dealing with the culture that's been, again, I, it, I, I just, I'm, I love the native American culture. I just, I think it's right. And, and, and it's it makes just, you think that since a lot yeah. of this was oral tradition, like you exactly. said, a lot of it is, has been lost. Exactly. So, I mean, can you imagine if we, and the other thing is, you know, I don't blame them, uh, the culture, I don't blame the nations themselves for not telling us everything. Because mm-hmm. look at what we do. We're stupid. We'll go out looking for the damn thing or whatever. Right. You know? yeah, and we they have to capture they're, it or something. They're straight up telling you, stay away from this thing. And then, you know, and again, I'm guilty of this. My dumb butt goes out the woods looking for it. You know, and, but I, I've said this before, Marlene, and I'll say it again. It, if I'm being 100% honest, and I think you'll agree with what I'm about to say. If I had 100% documented proof that Bigfoot existed, I seriously doubt one. Well, one, I don't think I'd ever release it personally. Uh, I was about to say, you'd think really good and hard. I, but I, really I wouldn't. And, and the reason for that is because humanity, in my opinion, would try to sully it. Some There'd be some hillbilly somewhere trying to mount one head on a He's wall. He's like, yeah, man, I need that. I right. need that in exactly. my, uh, whatever. And my- I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm a no kill guy. I don't care. You, you know, and I, you're talking to, I'm a second amendment guy. I go, I go out packing. I, when I'm in the woods, I got three fifty-seven sure, magnum on me. Of course, all right. Yeah. I mean, you know, but that's not for you know that that's that's for protection. Uh, and if I had to shoot something, I would I would honestly, it'd have to be life or death. Yeah, I know self preservation is a yeah. wonderful thing, but I know exactly but, what you mean. But you know, unless it's that at that moment. Yeah, and the other but, thing is this: even if I had that evidence, mm-hmm. Marlene, let's be honest. What are the chances I'd ever even that I'd ever see the daylight? Well, you be, know what it reminds me of? The MIBs or something popping and up. And I looked at it and I thought, you remember in the, I'm going to go back to, you remember when Jaws came out, right? Oh, yeah. You remember that after they just realized that, yes, that there is a killer shark right. in the waters. How all of a sudden yeah, they've yeah. got a million yeah. people running around. And and yeah. I, I always think of exactly like what you said. If I ever came over some evidence that's like, this is incontrovertible. This is like, this is, this is it. I have to really think good and hard. Do I really want to do this? And here's and here's one of the reasons why, Marlon. This is just one of the many many aspects of why I would do that. Think about this. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very uh, I'm a spiritual man. I'm a religious man. I have you know I I I have faith. Uh, I respect everyone's faith. I think there's I don't think there's such a thing as a bad religion. I don't think as long as you have some kind of faith, I think you're you know you're set. Uh, and it's not for me to judge. I don't judge anyone. I I'm a guy that goes looking for monsters in the woods. <laughs> or a ghost in an abandoned house. Who the hell am I to judge anyone? Let's just throw that out yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. But, I know it's <laughs> But the way I look at it, if if we had incontroversial, uh, in, irrefutable mm-hmm. evidence that Sasquatch was alive, and then we got the genome on it, 
Yes. And it says, okay, it's half this, it's half human. Here's my thing. Uh, what happens to religion? Because God made man oh, in God's image. Who made that? A deep and by the way, hole. if that's here, then, then everything else is bull and blah, blah, blah. Or the other flip side of that is what if it says, okay, and think about this because this is what I always this is this is how I usually shut skeptics up. Okay, if Bigfoot's real and they don't, why don't they want it? Well, let's just say it is real right. and it's indigenous to this planet. Right. That would mean we're not indigenous to this planet. Think about this. And I know a lot of Bigfoot people is that. perfectly suited for this planet. All right. They're huge. They're strong. They're fast. They're fur covered. They can eat raw meat. They don't have to right. cook their food. They've got night vision. They're got and hearing. They've got claws. Uh, you know, they've got that yeah. incredible strength. They, they've got the ability to pretty much eat anything. And then there's us. Yep. We got, we got a three pound organ in our head that makes us superior and everything else in our own minds, but that and opposable thumbs, but yeah. that's it. We need food. We need shelter. We need water. Sure. We can't hibernate. We can't see in the dark. We're very fragile. Yeah, we are. And if you we look are. at it in the real scheme of things, we're very small. Oh, sure. Compared, look at, I mean, take, take a look at uh, an orangutan. And then take a look at a, you know, six foot guy. I mean, there's no, there's no exactly. way you're going to, you know, even come close to the strength and uh, agility of that particular yes. animal. So they are completely suited for this planet. We are not. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it that way, that kind of changes, that flips the script too. No, and if that, you're logical and rational, you cannot logically and rationally repudiate that statement because you're telling me, okay, wait a minute. We're good. We're good. Like in the Mediterranean. Okay. Then what are we doing in the Arctic? Then what are we right. doing? We have to have clothes on. We have to have this. We have to have this. We have to eat X amount. We have to drink X amount of water every day. Right. We do not no, age yeah, well. That perfect setting. Right. We don't age well. You know, everything we deteriorate. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know no, how. Like you said, what yeah. that saves us is our that intelligence and organ. our that's ability it. to climb trees. Yep. That's it. So, I mean, you know, think about that, you know, otherwise if, if, we'd be a know, deep doo-doo. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, I've read reports where, you know, skunk ape uh, in Florida, skunk ape sightings uh, in, in the Northern Everglades, you know, 12 foot alligators getting picked up and thrown in the trees and smashed up and boom, that's dinner. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they ripped the They rip it off. They rip it apart. Yeah. I mean, think yes. about that. The, the strength that I'm not going to be able to pick up a 12 foot alligator, let alone rip it apart, but that's sure. because I'm not, a predator that's designed specifically for this area and, and this kind of, no, uh, that, 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 that it's going to, it's going to find, and this is why I tell everybody, if, you know, if you go by the proportions that you hear about different Bigfoot, whatever the area, they're huge. The amount of calories that they have to burn. In other words, to eat, yeah. in other words, just to maintain themselves. Okay. You're talking, I'm sorry. I'm not going to say it's not uh, an omnivore and he'll eat a berry here and a berry there. But I'm sure that most of his food intake has got to be carnivorous. It has, it has to be protein, and it's probably organ meat. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. probably that's, and I I have seen the leftovers uh, of uh, what I believe is either cynocephali or Bigfoot kill. What and happened? What, did you, what was you. that? Well, what, what how, describe that? How? What did you find? Honestly, but what made was, what made you was, how's that? How what made you think this is because of the uh, honestly, Marlene? The one word I can it was a mess. Oh, okay. It was a, it was it looked like something out of a horror movie. Really, there was chunks of this this deer ripped off and thrown. The intestines, the air organ, all the organs were gone. The tongue was gone. Uh, the there were spiral fractures on the legs. The one of the legs was completely missing. And this nice. thing was still, it wasn't, it wasn't even cold. It was still a little warm. Wow. Uh, and it was, it, it was, it was a nightmare scape. It's like whatever did this, enjoyed doing it. And I like making a mess. Sure. Right. Exactly. Uh, and and that's all was... I can say. Uh, it, bears don't, I've seen bears kills. I've seen tiger. I've seen, you know, I've seen large animal kills. And this was something completely different. I mean, this thing was, when I say ripped apart, it was literally ripped apart. It's like someone took the insides out and just left everything else. Right. And you and, and it makes you think most and ripped predators the legs don't out. do yeah. that. You know, they no, go through eat the, the belly. Meat, yeah. And uh they but they don't, you know, they don't do that. As long as they can just get to it, you know, they don't yeah. they're not interested in ripping it apart. How's that, you know? Yeah. 
the, but I mean, but the, the, the amount of strength and the, the power exactly to do that. Exactly, I would take to do that. I mean, that's just, uh, I can't even fathom it. And then I've, I've, heard, I've seen reports we're talking about, you know, they've seen Kumbo told me a story about once uh, where he actually saw the bull. Uh, uh, he calls them boogers. This booger broke in. I love Kumbo. He goes, Chris, this booger broke in <laughs> to the pan, grabbed the biggest bull it could find, snapped its neck, and just walked away. <laughs> you know, just left it there. Uh, so it's it's one of those things that it's just, you know, right. I believe it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think they're territorial. I think they have uh, bad days and good days like us. But, I mean, they are completely designed to do what they do. And you know, I think they, they, they sometimes come closer is my own theory. They come closer to either, like you said, like uh, cattle or, you know, where there's farm animals or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think either one, they're hurt or they're older. Okay. Well, they yeah. Well, realize. See, yeah. Animals, just like humans, you know, they can get old or they have an yeah. injury where they maybe can't hunt what they normally would. Or they've been thrown out of their pack or, or we, don't, we don't even know how they live. We don't, we don't even yes. know how their society is. They could have been yeah. deposed alpha. He could have yes. been a nutcase. I mean, I'm a, I'm a firm believer they have a structure. I'm, I, I firm think believer. so too. I think uh, so just too. From, just from what I've witnessed, you know, I've seen, uh, I, I've witnessed like uh, three sets of tracks, big ones in the front. Little ones in the middle, real big ones in the back. Okay. And if you think about it, that's exactly how you would walk if you were walking your kids. Sure. Because you put them in the middle of mom and dad, because why? Mm -hmm. First yeah, of all, something's going to come up from behind you. You want big papa there. Exactly. And mom, and let's face it, a female Sasquatch is no wimp. I mean, sure. that's, you know, she's going to be they're able gonna, to, they're going to, they're always going to, it, it, yeah. just like if you see elephants, all exactly. the young in the they do middle, the same thing, they crowd the young in the middle and it's all the yes. old mothers and the, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they'll they surround just, they, the young, right. the, the most vulnerable. Right. They, mm -hmm. they do that. Yes. They do that. Is, I mean, and that's just, now these things probably think a lot like us. Sure. I'm convinced their intelligence level is just incredible. I have seen woven blinds. Uh, it's, it's just perfect. I mean, it's, it's artistry. And, you know, there's nothing else I can even think of that would have done that that far out. And, you know, by the way, it was it was too much logs and, you know, saplings. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that takes that takes a lot of thought. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That, that. You, know, and, you know, you also hear like something like what you described about hunters being out in the field and they've lost kills. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what happened to the what I just shot or what I just killed? You know, you hear all these stories from hunters. That I'm no buddy of mine in Mayaka. He was pig hunting in Mayanka. Uh huh. And he took down a, a decent, he, he said at least a couple hundred pounds, at least. And he said he saw where it fell. He turned around. He climbed out of his stand. He uh, went to his side by side, got a drink of water real quick, and then went down there. And all he found was a puddle of blood. I and it, it was just gone. But the other thing, there was, it didn't, there was no, like you could see where something fell. He saw the puddle sure. of blood, and then there was nothing. So right. what moved it? So, I mean, you just, you know, I, and exactly. I, I'm with you. I think they're, you know, they love it when we're out there because it takes, they don't want to burn calories because it's like you said, they got to, well, they probably have, they probably need 20,000 calories a day to live. You know, you hear about yeah. it, you you know, you hear about sharks that will follow around yeah. these fishing boats uh -huh. because they know they're going to get, they're yeah. going to get food, Eventually, you know, yeah. and yeah, they can perfectly hunt, but why if they're going to be throwing all these slops or, well, you yeah, know, because after they gut the fish, I mean, they're going to yeah. eat whatever, you know, they throw them and 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 I I tell everybody one time, I had gone out on a gambling boat and you know that they had to go out like I can't remember it was twelve miles yeah, so that twelve they, miles international waters. It yeah. was one of these gambling boats and we had been you know we had and we go oh, let's go upstairs and you know let's get a some breath of fresh air. It was nighttime, and uh, you know when the boat anchors, it was a smaller boat. It wasn't one of these huge. It was a smaller. It was like a a, a nighttime thing. It was like they yeah. left and they came back. It wasn't a cruise like. And we went out, and they when they were stationary, they're anchored. This boat would, turns on these lights all around the rim, you know, basically illuminating all around it into the water. The boat, the ship, the ship, it was was surrounded by sharks. Yeah. I We did like a, you know, when you look down and it's like, hey, my God, that's a shark. Wait a minute. Because, yeah. you know, these lights make these pools of light on the water. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, right there, you know, you could see if anything is right there underneath that light. It was, I'm not exaggerating. It was surrounded by sharks. Yeah, and I'm not talking food. about teeny sharks. And this is like, we're, 
I think it's like 13 or 16 miles off the coast because that's when you're like out of in international waters yeah. and you could. And I was like, holy crap, if you fall in, that's it. Good luck. And then I'm thinking, and then I'm thinking, wait a minute, these sharks know that these ships, I guess they dump out food or something yep. when they're out there. And they know, they know they were hanging out there. I, I could never get over that. I said, I, I want to go back inside because it was like, that's it. You fall in. Good luck. Oh, yeah. You will not find anything left of you. Oh, yeah, it's gone. And I think that most predators do that. They they go where the, it's easy to feed. Well, and I think, you know, not only that, but that, that's why I think they follow power lines. They'll follow like the Appalachian Trail. I get a lot mm-hmm. of reports, you know, a lot of reports this time of year. They'll see these uh, guy. I last one I talked to, he took on. He said, he goes, man, I thought this was the biggest wolf I'd ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Next thing I know, it stands up. It actually stretched out, kind of yawned, scratched itself, looked around, and right. just started walking off on two legs. <laughs> oh, and he said he was just completely. He said it didn't. He just said it just did it like it was so natural. He said it was just boom, there was. But I think they follow the Appalachian Trail and I think they migrate. And it's simple. Uh, sure. and here's look at if you're a just just say you're a 10 foot tall, uh, 2000 pound North American primate covered in hair and you got to maintain 20,000 calories a day just yes. to keep walking. You don't want to be in Florida in August. No, you're going to follow August your food source though. Yeah, but yeah. well, but that bring you right to Canada. Oh, yeah, no, the weather, the weather yeah. has to do with it. And um, you go right to Canada, you got more ample food sources, you got yes. less people, you got more food, and yes. you know, it's cooler weather. And then vice versa, when it gets too cold down there, they come back down. They come back down. They might, you know? I'm, I'm sure of it. That makes sense. And now let me ask you, what do you think? What's your theory on dogmen? I've seen three dogmen in my life. So uh, uh, they're in a doubt in my mind, they're, they're real. Uh, I saw one on the parkway and it was just sitting on a rock or a stump looking. And I, I actually thought it was the biggest bear I'd ever seen in my life. Then I kind of stopped and looked at it and it had this massive shoulder. I mean, it was, it looked like a cartoon man. it was just huge. And, uh, it looked at me dead, just looked at me right in the eyes. It had these yellowish eyes. It looked at me and then a bumblebee came flying around and said, I started looking at that. And then it was more concerned with the bumblebee than me. I almost drove off the parkway. I almost. Well, went, let me ask you that. Yeah. What point did you realize, man? That's not. That's not. A, that's not a bear. What is that? When I when I came around, I actually saw the front of it. Oh. And okay. it had a huge. I mean, it was just. It was a picture like the biggest WWE wrestler you can imagine. Okay. Like hunched over, covered in hair, with a wolf head, but it didn't have any teeth protruding. It actually was moving its head, kind of like you know how a puppy looks at stuff. And it's kind of going. Yeah. That. It was kind of doing that, and it could have cared less. I was there. Could have cared less. And I'm in a little 2020 Honda, uh, 2012 Honda Fit. If it wanted me, <laughs> that thing could have knocked me down off the road, ripped that door off, and I'm in lunch. In two seconds. That's like, how big I'm, this thing was. This thing was like, I'm going to do the Fred Flintstone thing. <laughs> this thing doesn't yeah, go any I, faster. And I, I actually thought I was losing it. I thought I was going nuts. I actually, you know. and uh, You know I'm what? Like, and, and I've thought of that. I've I kept staring back at it. How many it people think? Mistake it for something oh, else yeah. because it doesn't add up. Because <laughs> in my mind, you know, your 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 brain wants to put. It's what paranoia yeah. is. You want to connect the dots, and uh, it, it it was Dan Wolfman. I'm like, oh, and then uh, I think I saw the same one in different place. I think I saw a, a different one, two different times at the same place, uh, and that was when we had a big foot. That's actually we were on a TV show for that one. That okay. that was some crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, we got. Uh, Yelled at by a Bigfoot. Really? And when I say yelled at, uh, we were, we were, my partner and I, my buddy Tiny, uh, same as real name, Daniel Hurst. Uh, Daniel's almost seven foot tall. Daniel's huge. And uh, he's a big boy. He's from West Tennessee. And he's one of these guys, he's not happy unless he's barefoot walking in the woods. You know, he grew up, he's a good old boy. I mean, he's just, that's the way he's just one of the smartest uh-huh. guys you're ever going to meet, but he's just a total, complete you know, he, he's just outdoor a guy, outdoor guy, uh, nicest guy in the world. And like you said, we call him tiny cause he's so big, but, um, we were breaking in a new team member and they weren't too comfortable with guns. Okay. So what we did, and this is how stupid, well, uh, stupid for whatever you want to call it. Uh, while the, the, the area we we're investigating, they were doing a national park cleanup day. Okay. So I'm like, you know what? I don't want to go walking out there with guns, scaring people. Sure. 
So I said, let's just leave the guns in the car. We're out there walking around. And then within, the one time, right? <laughs> yeah, we're out there walking around and we started finding Marlene. We found footprints. We found kill sites. We found handprints. I mean, strides. I mean, it just things running up a hill. I mean, just wow. hand. I mean, it's all, and it's all documented. If you go to cryptoguy.com and look at the possible evidence, you'll see it's all pictures. And uh, we came up to this blind and we're going up a real pretty steep embankment. And I'm starting to look at this blind and I realize it's weaved. Like it is literally weaved together. Okay. And I can't see through it, but I can kind of see like a shadowy thing through it. And it must have been 10 to 11 foot tall. And all I heard was. And that and was like, I need to, we need to get out The first thing here. I did, because Tiny told me, because Tiny was right behind me, he goes, Christian, you, you ain't got your gun. Because <laughs> I'm literally. <laughs> I'm grabbing. I love it. I I'm love it. My <laughs> right, like where my hip is on my right. Yeah. First thing I'm doing. I've got phantom handgun syndrome. I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> where the hell did I put it? Yeah. And I said, Tiny, just walk away. I said, lift up your hands and just walk backwards, real quiet. And it, it like, it did that thing again, but it was so loud. And I'm not trying yes. to sound gross. I've said this before. Uh, I had had a chest cold. It actually knocked the phlegm loose. Right, and I've heard of that. People and I was think like, that it's so that makes you right. So I, I was having a hard chest. time breathing, and I'm trying not to be disgusted and hawking. I don't know if that's gonna, you know, insult this thing. So I'm trying to walk away like this, and meanwhile, I'm scared to all but Jesus. And I'm looking at Tiny, and I turn and I look at Tiny, and Tiny's fat. He's just terrified, and that's that's I've never seen him scared. And of course, he denies it to this day. He's like, I wasn't scared. That's the hell you weren't. Yeah. Anyway, and the person that's, we're with, she had never been out. And anything like that, she is literally freaking. I was gonna say that like, that, that, that either made it or break it for her. That was a she, deal. No, well, her. she's she, I mean, she's tough too, but she was freaking to the point where it's like she honestly, I don't think she knew what to do. And then we're like, here, get yes. and we did the same thing. I got behind, I said, Tiny, get us out of here. I'll stay behind. We just walked. I said, Everyone lift your hands up. I said, I kept apologizing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We didn't mean to interrupt, we didn't do true. Sorry, we're just looking for evidence. I, I just kept saying that. And Tiny started putting. I said, "Tiny, put your hands back up." And we're, yeah. we must be walking with our hands up for about a quarter, five, half a and mile. And that's the thing yeah. that I've I've heard some of these recordings, even some of the ones that Ron yeah. Moorhead has done. Yeah. And I, th I'm thinking to myself, if I was out in the woods somewhere, I'd be like, "I'm leaving now," because this is like this doesn't sound like any this the vocalizations. Well, the problem is, is like when you're see when you put yourself in that situation, you're pretty much stuck there. And here's why. Yeah. One, they know you're there and they're still doing it. Two, they're still doing it and they don't know you're there. Or uh -huh. three, they're going to get surprised if you move to get to your vehicle or just leave. And that's probably a bad idea. Yeah, especially so, if you've hiked a while right. distance to get where and you're at. You're not going to be running pitch black. And, and most people don't realize how dark it is in the woods. Oh, yeah. You're not going to be running pitch black in the woods. You're going to knock yourself out. You're going to fall off a cliff. I can't <laughs> tell you how many times in the light during investigations we've gone screaming down the side of a mountain because of mud or something's what loose you yes. know i mean i can't tell you how many times i've gone tumbling down yes uh, i mean it, it's and it's they, they say that, that 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 that's you know it's, as a matter of fact they talk about you know that that now there's a lot of people that it's like a thing where they go off tra off trail like oh i'm you know i'm not gonna follow the trail i'm just gonna like go out in the yeah, and, and, and they they're called missing crazy. They're called yes, missing exactly. 411. Missing for me, missing 411, you know, and especially if they, yeah. And yeah, we never found them. So and so, he, you know, found his truck or his car out in the parking lot, and that was that. But I've heard of that. And, um, and did you hear about that? This happened, uh, as a matter of fact, they made a show, I want to say, how many years ago? Maybe 10 or 15, about up in uh, an Oregon, they found a guy living with his daughter for four years, had been living in the woods. And, um, the ones that that came across him was one of these people that go hiking off trail yeah. and he came back and he he told the like the i guess the park or wherever they were at they go hey there's a guy out there was teenage girl like a young girl like you know and they finally found them these people have been like this man he apparently he, he was a veteran from vietnam had been he only got like a 400 dollar stipend and this was his daughter, and he later told me he goes the their mom the mom was institutionalized, and they, he would go twice a week into town, like a little town. They were like very close to some town that was on the outskirts of Portland, but it was stay, way out in the middle of nowhere. And they would they had a little vegetable garden. They were camping out like next to a creek, 
And my point being, and these people, nobody had ever seen them. And these were humans, which, by the way, would go twice. You know, so when people say, well, we can't find the, the, the dog man or the cryptid or the Bigfoot. Hey, they had two humans living out there for four years. And they didn't find them until just one day that one of these hikers came across them. Um, and sometimes when I was reading, I was like, man, I would love to ask them what they had seen when they were out there living or what they had heard. Because yeah, I mean, that'd be fascinating. You, I'm sure. And like I said, I've heard some of those recordings of vocalizations and it was like, I'm no expert far from it about, you know, because I've heard that some of these animals, regular animals do make weird noises or calls that you'd be like, that's a what? But I'd be like, man, this doesn't sound, this sounds almost like it has, what's the word I'm looking like vocal cords kind yeah. of, mm -hmm. where you're thinking, okay, this is not. Yeah, it's, it's no, there's no way that's an a animal. cougar yeah. or a bear or whatever, a moose <laughs> or no, coyote. Maybe. Yeah, I got you. And, but uh, it's, it's yeah. just fascinating, Marlene, because you never know. I mean, that, that's the thing. That's the one cool thing about cryptozoology is you never know what's going to happen day to day. Sure. You know, they keep finding all these new. You know, I, 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 I'm a huge uh, um, archaeology guy. I, I love archaeology, and uh, mm -hmm. they keep finding new stuff every day in these right. ancient places, like you know, the sure. pyramids and stuff like that. And you just never know what's going to be found. Well, you know? you know what? And now that since you're a history teacher, you're the that you keep hearing about. A lot of the history of, especially we're talking here more ancient stuff, the, the, how's this, the years that we've been given don't quite add up. In other words, some, some of these places are turning yeah. out to be older. Well, yeah, they're having problems. Like, I'm a, I think the pyramids are probably 10,000 years older than what we think. Right, exactly. Maybe that would make more sense. That's just me. And they, and they keep finding, um, like you more said, more, archaeological, yeah. like these cities or these that they thought were like, didn't really exist. They're finding them. Yeah. They're well, actually finding them. Yeah, and they're they're all biblical. And like they're finding biblical, biblical cities. And then like they're in the jungle now and they're finding because of that front that that FLIR radar, they're finding right. all these cities in the Amazon that were right. literally homes to millions of people. And this predates, you know, sure the conquistadors and all that. So oh, you yes. know, small parts didn't wipe them out. What did? And then you've right, got the, um what is it? The um in Montechibu, and then you've got Peru, you know. They, well, they, these Guatemalan, that, that, I mean, that the, the only way that we've been able to see them is because now we, we can actually, we have satellites that yeah, are so far right. ab above ground, you know, from the surface of the earth that we can actually see it. And they they realize, hey, there's these structures down yeah, there. Yeah, under the jungle. Yeah, they're under the jungle. and They're, they're huge. The they're, they're massive, yeah. um, you know, cities, you know, whatever and they, they are. And they go there and boom, lo and behold, it's all stone and then they've got paved roads. And once yes. they, all you, all you need is a little roundup. And the next thing you know, you got a city that's been buried. Right. And like I said, this is not, this is, we're talking massive. Yeah. And then, you know, and then it's like, okay, what, you know, who was the, who was, which was the civilization that was. I'm telling here. you, they're going to find El Dorado. That, that's just, that's just a. What was it? Was that El Dorado? Is where, I know that the there was a, gold. A, yeah, a couple people that yeah. or explorers that got lost that they never yeah, heard from them again. Gold. Yeah, yeah. There were some people that went out there looking for it, and that was it. That they were never seen or heard I from would, again. I would, I would, I it would. I, I can't tell you how much I would love to have the opportunity. See, the problem is just the financing, but to have the love, the opportunity. If someone said, "Hey, Christian, we're gonna give you and your team what you need, and we'll give you two months and see what you can do," blah blah blah. I say, "Good day. <laughs> I'm out." Yeah, let's go. Well, <laughs> let me ask you, do you think I've heard um I've heard there was supposed to be also even in the American Southwest that they said that there was some some type of um not, I don't want to say an El Dorado, but some type of version of either hidden treasure. And I'm talking something older than that. Well, there you know, there's that 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 whole thought process that the Egyptians came over. Yes, and stopped in Ohio. They found Egyptian stuff in Ohio. I don't know if that's ever been proven false, mm -hmm. but now there's like this whole buzz thing that now they're finding all this new Egyptian uh, stuff in the Grand Canyon, and it's that part of the Grand Canyon that has now been uh, you're, you're no, it's banned. You can't go in there. You can't go around it. Whoa. So yeah, and it's like what is this doing here? Yeah, like that? that's well, that's a history changer. Sure, right. of course. So, and that that would that, and again, I classify that, and this is just my classification. Anyone call whatever you want. This is just what we use at A caps. That would be forbidden archaeology. And why would it be forbidden? Because it changes everything. Oh boy, does it! And does you talk it? about a Mandela effect. 
What? How are we going to prove? Let's just say that the Egyptians like, made it over here. And what? What the hell was that? Where Native Americans came from, or where? Or yeah, that that lamp bridge from they've got uh, their own. They've got their own DNA sequence that can't be. That's you know everyone thinks they walked over from Lambridge. Nay, nay, right? That's not you know that I have seen evidence to prove the contrary. Now I don't know how mainstream that's gone. I don't know if it's hundred percent legit, but it, it doubts in my mind because if if you've got a, a genome that says hey this isn't from this this or this, where's it from? Well, you know. And, this is um I was interviewing this gentleman that he was describing how this is that area around Thunder Bay up in Canada mm -hmm. where they they have huge deposits of of bronze tin you know bronze oh mines. yeah where they where they pulled it all out it's been yanked and they out. found they it the and that yeah. that some of it is dates back to Phoenician times like in other words we have Phoenicians coming up and and he says that that what was produced there is so particular. In other words, that they found it in these areas and these ancient civilizations. This was because, of course, before the Iron Age. This was when right. bronze was much in demand. In other words, they know that it was sourced there because it has a particular, I don't know. In other words, it's only produced there. Not the only place yeah, you produce It's got like bronze. an elemental signature. It's only indigenous to that specific area. Right. right. And they were, uh, I mean, I won't go into it, but basically what he was presenting was and we were talking about was that Basically, it looked like, you know, we're talking here, B.C., Phoenicians had come over and were basically trading for this bronze. And they was even, even thinking that the natives would mine it and bring it down the river, you mm -hmm. know, and then, you know, do the the but, trade off. But see, they were Maureen, trading. Here's, here's the problem with the way we perceive things. All right. You and I were taught in school. OK, yes. the earth is only X amount of years old. And then if you exactly. go to the religious aspect, like. I was raised, you know, religiously. So the earth's only 6,000 years old and blah, 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 blah. Right. God did all this in the week and blah, blah, blah. And fossils are all bull and blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's fine. And again, mm -hmm. I'm still, I, you know, I'm still manifest. But what was there before? Sure. It says God created the earth. Doesn't say when. There's no exactly. stamp on when he did that. Yes. So what makes us think we were here first? I mean, they're finding, they're finding, you know, uh, nuclear residue from, you know, 10, 20,000 years ago in India in the desert. They can't mm -hmm. explain that. There's, there's crazy amount of uh, hieroglyphics that, you know, depict aliens and things like that. I mean, you can't sure look at the Bhagavad Gita. I mean, look at that. Yes. That's basically, exactly. that's Buck Rogers. I right. mean, and it's things like it that. Okay. This is not like, yeah. Okay, this predates all, like where did this this idea come from? Um, same thing. I, I've always I know this is kind of like Mayan a bit Aztec off. cultures. They've got Mayan all, all Aztec the, yeah. um, that they have all these the overlapping, yeah. you know, things you know, gods or yeah, interpretations. I mean, exactly. And so I tell yeah. everybody, you know, you see like you know these older civil, you know Christians and even the dragons. Okay, if you look at a dragon, you're basically looking at a dinosaur. You know, that's you know what. But see, again, who's to say those things? I, it, it, I love it when say science says, oh, well, they can't exist. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I got one more for you. Sela camp. Yeah. There it is. Exactly. The Sela 100 camp. million years gone, huh? It's, well, they can't. I, well, I'm eating some Sela camp sushi right now. So where'd this come from? You know, it's like, yeah. You can't be definitive. You have to have that. Yes. That's the thing about science, mainstream science, it kind of bugs me. Because what most people don't realize is mainstream science and physics. There's a reason why it's called theoretical physics. Theoretical, we can't exactly. prove it. This yes. is our theory. All right. We've got the math, but we had to make weird math to make it happen. Let's be honest, because it is different. I mean, you start looking at the you know way math works. And in my opinion, I think some stuff is twisted to make stuff look better than others. But that's just me. Right. And that and, that, 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 and you know what? That yeah. comes back to basically also what you were talking about. What version has been massaged? Because yep. that's the one that they want. This is this is the version we want. Exactly. And um, we'll massage it or like, oh, let's include that, but omit that. You know, well, that kind like of book to the Bible. You know, they left yeah. the book of Enoch out. If you ever read the book Enoch, that kind of is a game changer. Sure. You it, know, it, and it, then it. there was the book of Mary Magdalene that was left out, and they mm -hmm. talk about you know rights for women. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? I mean, you're talking this thing, you know, a thousand years ago. Why wouldn't they have rights for women? Well, it's simple because they wanted to control. Sure. That's all it is. It's all about power and control. That's why 
the, you know, the wealthy and the people that, that run the show have always been the highest educated. Uh, I, I tell my students this, and I tell everyone this, the one great equalizer on this planet is education. If sure. everyone on this planet got educated to the point uh, of their full capacity, there would be yeah. no problems in this world. Yeah, literacy, even literacy. You exactly, know, but education is the key to everything. And I don't, it, that's the one, you can be born poor white trash, much mm -hmm. like myself, and get yourself almost to a doctorate, and then finally, you know, eventually I'll finish it up. But that that only gives me prestige in the community. But sure. it gives me, you know, a higher prestige than most people. But you know that I've some places people I, don't realize right. you could sit down for, let's say, a certain degrees. Doesn't mean you have to go to attend it as long as you pass no. a test. In other words, yeah. if you go and you read and you learn, and, the, and, and I know everybody's level of, comp, you know, some people, how's this? I know some people learn and they need, they learn better in a classroom setting. How's this? With right. Well, that's, that's how I am. I have to be in class. I'm old school. You know, and then there's other people that they can, they can do it by themselves. You know, they, they, if they read and they, 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 they by the way, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. Well, I get, no, I can read and, and write. But, but I know I'm reading, really, but I'm saying if I had to, if they told me, I, we want you, you know, it's not going to be any teacher. This is the material. Learn it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I could do that. I mean, I could do it too, but I do a better job with the teacher. No, I know. I know that yeah. there's some people with this. And once upon a time, and I'm sure you've seen it, uh, especially uh, uh, people would get taught by lecturing outside, like like you said, outside, mm -hmm. where it was a discussion. It wasn't like the blackboard and this and that. It was like your teacher would be discussing, let's say, a certain theory or whatever, whatever the subject was. It was like an open forum. It was a, like a lecture kind of deal. It wasn't, you know, that so much structure per se is more of an exchange of ideas. And that's how people, especially in universities, that's how they would learn. Yeah. It wasn't that, you know, basically, and, you know, and you could say, well, I disagree or whatever, or I think it wasn't that. Or how do you explain that? Well, you know, you, you know, you kind of like gave your, your professor like, hey, how does that work? You know, whatever the case might be. You know what's um, sad and, is that's the way you could still be today, but it, it's just. These particular no. groups of people just really not let that happen on both sides. It's like, no, you know, I what? know that I know that that you're not going to get anywhere arguing. Let's work together. I don't care. You know, sure. I do, I, that's a whole different. I don't even want to get into that. But no, no. But yeah. I'm saying as far as what you were talking about, I'm going to go real quick. And when you were saying that thing about Mary Magdalene. All mm -hmm. right. And, you know, there's also the controversy that they say, you know, like the Dan Brown book, you know, him and, right. and Jesus. But let's let's take that off the table. Right. But I think a lot of it was excluded because if you look at that, he had a female apostle. How's that? Mm -hmm. Even if you, even if you take out the romantic, you know, motivation for, let's say, Jesus wanting to keep Mary Magdalene around. That was, you know, basically he was putting her on equal footing with the rest of his apostles. Exactly. And think about that. Think about right. how revolutionary that is. Just thinking that and think about yeah. this is one of those fixed points in time I've talked about. But right. if you were to change it, when the Council of Nices came up with the, the Bible mm -hmm. and said, this is what we're going to release. All right. They did that for control. It's all about control. Sure. They didn't care about our salvation. They wanted the church to be running. The they, 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 it's all about I money. They, and power. They, that's that's yeah. that's basically what they all did when they chose yeah. what to include, what to exclude. Because if you say, OK, women are now again, let's go back in time, 2000 years and say, OK, now women are equal from 2000 years ago. to How what would our civilization look like now? Well, it's it's almost in. How can I say it? it it's almost. And this is the thing I that, that I always say as far as when people they they change history or they must you know whatever it's like you know I'd rather know the truth the the truth might be ugly, but I'd rather have the truth, good bad or you know what I'm saying yeah yeah exactly whether you know it, it and and I think also how can I tell you it ends up being more of an individual like if that person how can I say it um. The power of history, originally what I was saying, well, that's the way it is. And basically, then the society follows what the history says. And then you exclude, uh, you know, an alternative way of uh, it should be. All right. Because let's say, let's say, let's go back to, like you said, when they went ahead and they tinkered with what, what books they were going to include in the Bible. You know, we got to exclude again, you know, if Jesus had Mary Magdalene as one of his apostles, because... The interpretation for that would have been it would spread out into so many different areas. I'm not talking about hey, you know, feminine, you know, feminist revolution, you know, back in the third or fourth century. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying that. 
but it would have shaped it maybe differently as I mean, far yeah. as even the uh, let's say the role of women in let's say because remember originally what became the catholic church it, that was it that was the only game in town but you know like i tell everybody i went through 12 years of catholic school and i remember when i was in grade school the nuns were not allowed on the altar if you were a woman you were not allowed on the altar you cannot walk you know in other words you could come up to the altar like women of course when yeah. you're taking communion and i remember one time somebody i i i I kept saying, man, I don't see any of the nuns. And somebody said, no, they're not allowed man. up on the altar. And I was like, what? I was a kid. I was like, what? You know, again, mm -hmm. um, something as simple as, let's say, what would have been the role of women um, in the early Christian Catholic church? You know, if, if let's say, they would have said, yeah, we're going to include that, that Mary Magdalene was an apostle like the other, you know, the rest of the guys. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, it could have change stuff like that and i and i know there's people going oh sacrilege it's like no, that's sacrilege, sacrilege. You know? what's sacrilege you know? is they didn't give us the truth from the get-go sure of course because it's all power again it's all power control and honestly you can't tell me that uh, i'm about to piss off a lot of people here marley i don't know if i should do say it what to. do it right, you can't tell me that god doesn't want everyone treated equally of course not of course so not. when you're telling me god say okay uh you're telling me in, in some strict religions, God said women are inferior and the man's going to run yes. the house. Where, where exactly is that? No, I think I, I, I don't. I've read. I've got a pretty. I got one, two, three, four. I have five Bibles around because I use them for research. I've got different types, and I have yet to find. Now in Leviticus, it does say stuff. There's like a breakdown of how stuff should run. I see that, but I don't say where it says women are point blank inferior. I there are parts where women should listen to their husbands. Blah blah blah, but. What point did that change there where, you know, married people shouldn't listen to each other? Sure. Of course. I mean, how come you can't tell me that wasn't in there? So, of course. I mean, and, and then being Catholic, you know, Catholicism, who do we worship? Mary, Mother God. Of course. So and you're going to be disrespectful the... to God's mom and she's a woman. And sure. okay. Right, so, exactly. women, like... so wouldn't that be kind of like hypocrisy if you don't respect all women? So, and know. this was very, and, um, you know, um, I mean, we, I mean, this is a deep rabbit hole. This would, oh, by yeah. the way, I'm not saying because I'm not, I, I wasn't around then, but this is a lot, you know, of the, and I'm not, and, and I'm kind of torn on this, but, you know, you know, there's always been that debate in the Catholic church that the Virgin Mary was a virgin, mm -hmm. you know, that thing, because of course, back then, Sex was equated to like sin, you know. It was you know dirty, yeah, like. But okay, it was also it we're going to venerate her property rights too, right? We, you know, we're going to venerate her. and We're going to put yeah. her on this right. pedestal, and she was the mother of you know. Of right, God then she had other, how many other kids did she have? Well, th then they say, and then I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, well, you know, in other words, she's got to be for, the forever virgin. Yeah, that was you know, impregnated by the Holy Spirit, and that was it. In other words, because otherwise she cannot have that that standing. Right. But then I'm thinking, why? You know, why why would that make her any less of? Let's say she married Joseph and she had other children. She did. Yeah, but it, it was like, but it, you know, there's in the in within the Catholic Church, she's always, you know, I'll tell because, you because that the great school was I went to was yeah. called Immaculate Conception. Well, in other go. words, there's a big, um, how can I tell you? There's a big thing built around uh, this thing of who who, who Mary was whatever and then you you know come to think of it you know you look at you know there was nothing special about mary per se if you look at why she was chosen in in the sense of you know she wasn't a princess you know you always think of all these so why couldn't she have continued an ordinary life well i mean because it doesn't fit the narrative yeah. It's all about the narrative. It's all about the control. Again, and I'm not ragging on the church. I love the church. No, I'm just saying, I know that. You know, I don't have. It's I, just, I, it was all about control. Think about who ran the world back then. It was the Catholic sure. Church. Yes. It was the Holy Roman Catholic Empire. Actually, was what it was called. Right. Right. Yeah. Everyone once seems they, to once, forget that. Once they got well. Yeah. La, 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 okay. Let the, there was a time that they were being thrown to the lions in the Colosseum. But well, once yeah. we got beyond yeah, that. But well, once, <laughs> yeah. Well, I I think we got payback on that. I'm just saying. Right. Yeah. No, we I know the, that they and we still kept the word Holy Rome. I mean, Romans still in the church. You yes, know I mean? it is. It is. So, they they, and um, it's really funny because. I hate to say it, but the Eastern Orthodox, yeah. 
they seem to be stronger in their faith than the Roman side, you know, which recognizes the Pope as the head of the church, you know. Well, the Pope's um, always been a contingency with me because it's always like, look, I'm a Dead Sea Scrolls fan. If I want to talk mm-hmm. to God, I'll talk to God. I don't need a middleman. Now, right, I love exactly. I love the the history and the, the elegance of the church. Don't get me wrong. But mm-hmm. uh, when I'm out there in the woods and it's going south, I'm not going to wait for a phone call to go through to the Pope. I'm going to start talking to God right then and there. Of course. And I've done it many, many times, and I'll continue to do it because apparently he's listening. So sure, of course. I'm good with that. But, you know, I, that's just me. I, but And, again, I don't judge anyone else. You're talking to a man who's got a rosary on his neck and one in his pocket. I mean, well, so. See, this is the thing. People don't realize now. You look back then, you know, the Pope could threaten a king with excommunication. And be and like, oh, work. boy, yeah. I'm in trouble. You, Henry VIII. Yeah. yeah, look at that. That's how Episcopalian got here. Yeah, well, even before that, you know, if you were one of these, somebody that was like treading on, you know, on the Vatican's toes and working out, Vatican. and they didn't matter what your rank of the, the excommunication thing hung out over your head. And they, this was like not an idle threat. Well, look at okay. the Spanish Inquisition. Look what that yes. did. Yes. I mean, think about that. Yeah, that- no, people, people don't realize the... The Inquisition wasn't, you know, because, you know, they, they, there was, especially after the schism of, you know, yeah. Protestantism and Luther and all whatever. But yeah, the break basically the, 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 the Inquisition wasn't into burning witches. What they were after was heresy. Yeah. And but that was on their their time. It was, it was their version of what heresy was. Right. Right. Exactly. Heresy. If you were, meant if you were getting enough against- money, to the part, if the church wasn't getting into 10, you know, you weren't tithing at least 10 percent. You know, right. If, well, you if you were, were if you yeah. were going somehow against um, the teaching, that, which yeah. again we could get into, like you see all this art that all these they did during the Renaissance, you mm-hmm. could not really get into secular stuff. Not really, you know. If you look at all the arts work of arts, they had always a religious theme tied into it. Well, of course they did, but I mean, but honestly, think about it. that's why I was in the Renaissance. I mean, you're never going to have that again. Look at the 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 talent back then. I mean, Oh, sure. That's true. God given talent. And so that was divine inspiration by God. I mean, I'm, I'm yes. sorry, Michelangelo uh, and, and, you know, Da Vinci and my, these guys, I, if there was ever aliens on the world, I mean, I think there was two of them right there. Look at what they could do. Anything. Yes. I mean, look what Da Vinci managed to do. I mean, look at his anatomy book. I mean, just to this day, you know, he's still, just incredible. Well, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. One thing that you realized even back then, whatever whether it was uh, sculpting or or building or people learned their craft. You went in as an apprentice when you were yep. very young, usually. And of course, if you were able to apprentice to a master, and, and in other words, if you could say, "I learned from so and so," that was added to your prestige. Okay, but my point being that you really learned your craft. Um, to learn what you do, it was, it, you know, in other words, it wasn't like, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a course and, you know, I'll get a certificate. It was like people really learned and that's how, of course, how they produced what they produced because, and of course, I'm sure you had to be passionate about it, but, um, yeah, it was, a, and, but at the same time, you also see like, um, like from what I understand, you know, these people that all these artists that they had to make money, you know, if even if they, you know, patronage was how they basically mm-hmm. were paid. And they almost had like, from what I understand, certain paintings that were like half finished. And it's like, I'll just fill it in with, let's say, if my next patron wants a picture of his wife or his sister or his daughter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like ready art, like almost like. Yeah, it was ready to go. Just fill in the blank. Right. And you had students basically that came and the people that were working for your apprentices, a lot of time did the work for you and you, you oversaw what they did. And as a matter of fact, that's uh, I've seen that, that there's, they say the Mona Lisa, that they found more than one version of it, sometimes hidden under other stuff. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a different, it was a different time period as far as, you know, no mass production. In other words, not like. Now everything was original. Yeah. Everything was original, and uh, yeah, I, I, I guess we're we've we've gone nostalgic beyond the seventies or eighties. We've gone all the way back to the Renaissance. We're, we're hitting the Renaissance. <laughs> we're we're, we're talking about the Renaissance, you know. We cover everything in this show. Let me tell you that everything would have been great, except when you you know you get hit by the plague or the yellow fever, and then it'd be like, man, no air conditioning. It's like, take me back. I want to go back the into the twenty first century. Uh. 
Yeah, we're wimps. I'm sorry. I, right. I'll admit I'm a wimp. I'm a I like wimp. I like my bathroom. I like an indoor bathroom. I'm sorry. Exactly. Exactly. And climate control. Yep. Yeah. 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 You gotta have some AC. Yeah. Exactly. And AC. Anybody that's been a Floridian knows what the AC is oh, about. Once you go through a hurricane with two weeks no AC and no refrigeration. Man. You That'll know. make a believer out of you. It's like, yeah, you know what? You know, have you ever seen these people that say, oh, you know, they play the video games or all these worlds yeah. where, you know, or steampunk. And it's like, yeah, that's great in theory, but not in practice. Sorry. Well, you know, <laughs> and then people tend to stink after not bathing and people forget that. Oh, sure. And, you know, it's it's the other thing. It's like, I remember having to go down to my, I remember my, my apartment would get so hot after losing electricity after hurricane. Mm -hmm. I would, I think Hurricane Charlie is what did it. And okay. I would go sit in my Mustang with the AC on. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like man, drive around to get cold. Yeah. You know? Yes. And yeah. then go home, go to bed. <laughs> yeah, people don't realize, but that's that'll like it, you know. Back then, you didn't know about it, you know, in these years, or whatever, because you didn't know about it, and you know, it's like whatever, you know, what you don't know about, it, you don't miss. But yeah. once you get a taste of it, yeah. <laughs> for well, once you get a taste of air conditioning or heat, you like it. <laughs> yeah, or hey, plumbing, indoor plumbing. That's indoor a good one. Plumbing is a fabulous idea. I love it. And it's great. It is great. It's fabulous. <laughs> I remember one time I had a friend of mine who um and this was like in the nineties. And uh they went to Columbia and to the major city. It wasn't like, hey, we're out. Yeah. They had they had no hot water. They were staying in yeah. a hotel, but it had no hot water. They were telling me how they had to like, okay, and they're they're like, I gotta bathe every day, you know, like normal stuff. And it was like, okay, I got to brace myself. I got to brace myself so I could take a cold water shower. But it was like, and this was in a hotel. This wasn't like, hey, yeah. I'm staying up on the mountain. We take that for granted sometimes. I'm thinking in this country. You know what's like, really sad on the top. It's on the flip side of that. Like, it's real easy for me to go mountain, man. Like, uh -huh. after the first day, I'm good. Like, once uh -huh. once the beard starts coming in. No. And I'm out there in those sticks in the woods. I don't care. <laughs> let me tell you something. When it gets cold and I'm in North Florida, and, and let me tell you something, those really cold days, let me tell you something. I run out there and I feed my animals and I come back in here like, <laughs> you know, it's like. We'll go out there two, three, is, four, five days, no showers. No. As long as you got enough food, because I'm not hunting. As long as I've got enough food, I'm good. No. Because you, you start, know what? You, again, you start, you, you, you get that. Mountain men, you know. Oh, it's like, yeah, let me tell you something. Believe it or not, sometimes I go out there and I'm thinking, man, can you imagine living like this? Like this was the norm. I'd be, too, I'd be so caught up in just staying warm. I, I'd be useless. <laughs> I'd be like, that's why people died at thirty. You know, they didn't. There yeah. wasn't much longevity. Yeah, it was like, yeah, I yeah, just. What are you doing? I'm just trying to keep warm. It's like, what else do you want me to do? Like, no. Yeah, well, but we, we were talking about the Renaissance age or, or the you know, uh, medieval period, uh, mm -hmm. in, in my class. And I was telling my students, yeah. Uh, how many of you guys are 12, 13? Yeah. You'd all be married right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'd be dead. Cause you yes. know, I'm, I'm past my thirties. So I'd be dead. Yeah. And you guys would have kids right now. And, uh, you know, you'd all be old and yeah. gray. <laughs> yeah. This was, I was going to say that I was looking at something and this is, we're talking here. We're coming out of the medieval times. This is the time of Henry the eighth. Yeah. So, you know, we're not. And back then, the average lifespan was 35 years of age. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, we were, uh, what I was looking at is like, uh, I was doing the research, you know, on, uh, you know, you, by the time, you know, that, that uh, you know, he was getting all desperate why he ended up, you know, trying to get an heir and chopping off, you know, his, the, as a matter of fact, on May 19th was the anniversary of Anne Boleyn's decapitation. I was say Anne Boleyn, yeah. And um, people don't realize that by the time he had gotten around to uh, his third and fourth, you know, well, obviously he had a son with, with his third wife, but he was already like, in other words, even though he was the king, obviously, and he got well taken care of, that's it. 35 was the average lifespan. Even if you were a nobleman, you know, you maybe you lived a little bit longer, but already he, he knew that you know, pretty soon he was going to be gone. Yeah. And people don't realize that, uh, that that happened. And, and exactly like what you said, that's why you had these people that you look, they were, they were getting married 11, 12, 13 years old or by proxy, but still it was like, as soon as possible, they need to consummate it and start having children because 
Yeah, I mean, but think about it. I mean, now it's illegal, thank God. But well, yeah, of course. I mean, you, but, you, you, but it's because times change. But think mm-hmm. about in, in 100 or 500 years, how long human beings going to live by then? You know, biblically, we're supposed to live 120 years. Yeah, that's what I understand. Well, then what is it now? I'll be, I'm going to, I'm going to say it. And we'll go to the, we'll, well, let's go to Nostalgia Bill a minute. I looked down at some of the movies that were produced in the 70s and the 80s. Mm-hmm. And you will see parents that I look at them now and I go, man, th- those are grandparents. Those aren't parents. Like they, yeah, they, they're old. They cast people as parents yeah. of like children. I'm not talking about, you know, and then children. In the late 50s, yeah. And then I'm like, man, you look like if you're not, you look like you're in your 40s or well, 50s. Well, look, and- look at the father. Remember Christmas Story? Look at the old man from a Christmas Story. You know, yeah. he looked like he was in his 60s when you know Ralphie was a kid. Right, then, exactly. You know, but that's that's the way it was back then. You know, what's well, the thing? That, I was watching yeah. Jaws the other day, and you see the little kid that got yeah. eaten the first the one, the Kittner boy, Kittner boy. You look at his mom, and it's like, Mom, how old are you, Mom? You know, mom was, was like, she was, Mom was in her 70s, man. Mom was old. <laughs> you know, I was like, Was this like, you know, one of those late, you know, late, and the dad, there was, you know, because, um, there was a, they, they, they did a, you know, the next day they had a, a part where the mayor's walking around the sand yeah. trying to get the people to go in the water. Uh-huh. And they same thing. They show a couple with kids that were maybe eight, nine, ten. Yeah, they're like in their sixties. <laughs> they're like, like, wait a minute, what is this? And it's so funny. My point being that nowadays it'd be like those are obviously grandparents, maybe even great grandparents, as far as the aging process. Oh, yeah. You know, and when you look at the the movies from that time period, they were aging people out. Like, man, what what happened here? It's just yeah. like I said, you know. But then you know, it it, it also. You got to look at the health aspects and the mm-hmm. the medicines and, you know, the technology we have now. I mean, in the 70s, technology wasn't great for health care. Oh, well, I, mean, I think really that wasn't. there was, um, again, and we and we come back to what yeah. you were talking about literacy. I think it's information. Yeah. Availability I mean, of information, you know, with the internet. Yep. Now you go ahead. And I know some doctors pull their hair out because people actually have access to WebMD and can read, you know, especially if you're a hypochondriac. But I think accessibility to information that when you read about like, hey, what are the side effects or, you know, what what, is, what happens with this or what's the symptoms of that? You know, people that, that now have easy access to stuff, it makes them, if you know, I'm not ever saying everybody, obviously, but makes you make better decisions about maybe a drug you're taking or not taking or what you're eating or not eating or a habit or whatever. I think that has a good effect as far as you know, you make your own decision yeah, and an informed decision. How's that? If you're smart, mm-hmm. at least you have access to it. You have access to it. If you want to look it up. Um, and I'm a big one. Like I, I tell everybody, you know, um, when I was working my graduate degree, you know, I looked at what they do a lot of case studies and studies, you know, and you see a lot of times that they'll, they'll say, Oh, this thing was, they did a study and it's like, wait, a study, but what, how was the study? Like, how many people did you have? Part- in other words, you dissect it. Yep. Like how many people did you, how many participants did you have in it? And where did you choose them from? Yep, and like, the in other words, from? what was your control group? Yep. You know, like how long did you ever do any follow-up? Because some people think that if something, you know, and you've seen it even in some commercials, well, they say this is based on a study. It's like, mm, that might, might mean, mean nothing, <laughs> you know? Uh, but my point being that I could access that. You could access the papers now. For whatever reason, you don't have to be a student if you ever wanted to, let's say, uh, find out, you know, wh- whatever happened with people that took this drug or didn't or. Yeah, the information is there. Did you I don't know. Did you ever hear about the study, Chris, that they did? They This was a long term study. Which was it's rare where they took all the you know, when um, the Germans occupied the Netherlands and there was a period where there was a shortage of food. And they did a study of women that were pregnant while there was a shortage of food. They didn't starve, but they're they're there. They were borderline. There was a shortage of food. And they did a long-term study of the children born of these mothers that had had that experience, like 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And they found a correlation as far as the health and even at the age that they were dying. Uh, that common denominator that what they were affected in utero by, you know, yeah. by p- the mothers that had a shortage of food or nutrients. My point being that sometimes studies that if you want to, you can look it up. You'd be surprised what you can find out the truth. How's that? 
Yeah, that's what it is. A better perspective, and now that we've gone totally off the paranormal cryptid, we are way off. <laughs> okay, it has been absolutely. You got to come back. We got to keep talking about. I, this. I'm telling you, I was just about to say, I'm going to volunteer. Come back anytime you want me. Yes, we got to keep talking about this because, to be honest with you, we live in interesting times. We I know sometimes you. I don't know personally. There's times I feel like pulling my hair out. It's like, well, how did we get here? But if anything, I have to say that we live in interesting times. You know, my, my mom said something to me last time I saw her. I was down in Florida, and she goes, you know, I, I, I'm I glad I was born when I was born. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, that's kind of weird. Why would you? And then I started thinking, you know, my mom was born in 1950. Mm-hmm. 1957 was the highest satisfaction rate for every uh, American. Right. And she lived to see, you know, the Cold War, all this other stuff. But I think of how things are so different from when I was a kid. I can't imagine sure. how like, my mom feels because it's like, like all this different stuff. Like she's com- my mom's computer savvy. I mean, she's, mm-hmm. she's she's very educated, brilliant, most brilliant woman I've ever met. My mom is just there's nothing my mom couldn't do. My mom, uh, when when she was working, she was a psych nurse, and the doctors would bring her papers to read, and she'd give her respect. I mean, she was just brilliant. She was she had the number one scores uh, at her class uh, for the state. Uh, when she became a nurse uh, and it's so I mean, you know my mom's very very intelligent if anything good in me came from my mom I'm, oh my I'm god she, you, you gotta send you her know. i'm gonna send you the thing and you can say mom look <laughs> okay yeah you, <laughs> you want to get brownie points with your mom <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> not that you need any yeah. believe me I know, well I know but that. i mean it's just like but i i listen to what she says sometimes and my, my stepdad frankie and it's just like the older I get i realize how much wisdom sure age brings and it's like i start thinking to myself like i was thinking today i was like i don't know if i'd want to be a kid today oh and i i I love being you know uh what's the word i'm looking for i guess uh i I guess i like being a kid i like you know i'm a big kid i'm a kid with a driver's license i've been described as a large toddler before by co-workers (laughs) so but i'm responsible and i do what i'm supposed to but i mean i still like to have a good time and you know i don't think we need to be Grown up you know what? It's it's, and I tell you know, I tell everybody. I remember as a kid and even up to a teenager going out on Halloween, and you'd see yeah. scores of people. Yeah. How on how now? Try that. Everything yeah. is controlled. You know, they have like little places where you take your kid. Right. But you don't hardly ever see anybody what? on the streets trick or treating. Any what, age. Yeah. What's the point about being an adult if you can't be childish every once in a while? Right. I mean, and know. I was, I tell my kids, well, my kids, no, I have to say that my kids, they, they were still, there was still trick or treating going on. Right. But it's like, it was like some of the stuff has evaporated. Um, you know, like as far as great things that, and, you know, it's like, man, if this could come back, I feel sometimes that the, the older, the newer generations, I'm sorry, have missed out on. Um, I, I agree. No, I'm with you. Like the old, like, you know, I, I can honestly say that, you know, I remember doing hay rides and things like that for Halloween. And, you know, you, you had apple festivals and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They don't do stuff. I mean, it's very rare. They do stuff like that these days. Yeah. And it's like, why, why not go back to that? I mean, right. there was nothing wrong with it. You know, I mean, it's, you know, you can't even say you know, and now it's it's not even Christmas break; it's winter break. You know, it's it's stuff like that. You- okay, the um, I'm gonna and I'm gonna close on this, and whoever hears this story will probably know where this story comes from. This is this is from a recently released book by uh, Alex Jones, and I was listening to it. I've, I, I'm so busy that I've been listening to it on Audible. I love audiobooks. I love audiobooks. Yeah, I do, and he's describing where he was talking to somebody. And it, the, the, the basis of it was, as far as health, the importance of human interaction. And there was this, he was talking to a doctor who practiced medicine out in Pennsylvania during the 50s, 1950s. And his doctor's telling him how there's this little town, all right, and you can kill me right now, I can't remember the name of it. That's great, Marlene. And how he says, you know what, I don't have anybody under the 60s that that I treat for anything having to do with heart disease like like every this is the the healthiest you know like this is remember these are around the times that you had doctors do house calls and you kind of yeah. knew your patients and uh they started basically doing uh how can I say research 
on why, you know, like, is it something they eat? Is it something yeah. in the water? What is it? Basically, they found out that even though it was a very small town, they had so much social interaction. They, they had like 20 civic groups, <laughs> you know, um, at most of the time, at least three generations lived either in the household or very close to each other. You know, uh, that kind of basically that's what they found that was one of the things that was not only the longevity, but the health, the quality of life. All right. With his doctor had found that he didn't have anybody coming from that town for any of the heart disease or other ailments. He says, if 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 I get any of them, they're usually over the age of 65. And my point being that that social interaction, you know, you it's not a pill. You know, you can't, whatever, you got to do it. You're sometimes right. I think we, we ah, between the fears of things that happen and, you know, like you said, the, the, the attraction to video games or binging on Netflix or whatever, we've lost the advantages of human interaction that we used to have. And I think it's essential. I mean, there's there's something that it does for us as human beings, even the introverts, you know, even the person that's not like, I'm not a people person. I still think that that there's something that that we are social animals, no doubt about it. And if you've, I'm sure you've heard that even some of these prisons uh, putting up somebody in solitary will em eventually drive them insane. Yeah, you know? I mean, you know, we're, well, human beings are, you know, we're not solitary creatures. We're meant to be in a community. We're we're meant to be with family units, and that, that's why we're yeah. designed. And yes. that's why we, you know, we don't come pre-made you know we got to grow you got to have you got to be raised you got to be taught you know sure. so it sure. all makes sense to me but uh i've got i i just let me know when you want me back marlene Absolutely. i'm ready to go you got it it has been wonderful take care and i will be thank getting in so touch much. with you soon okay right. god bless marlene thank you so you much too. thank you everyone for listening oh by the way what is your website for my podcast uh, listeners you know what it's just cryptidguide.com or american cryptid and paranormal society.com Really you easy if uh, you guys could get me on Instagram or uh, Twitter. You know what, Marlene, real quick. For some yes. reason, about six months ago, we lost our Twitter account. <laughs> we lost really? it. Like, it just disappeared. It vanished. I have no idea why. I've never got an excuse. So we had to start over. So we're trying to rebuild our Twitter base uh, and our okay. Instagram base up. So if you guys could uh, link and subscribe to our Twitter and Instagram, I'd appreciate it. But I have had a blast, Marlene. What are you, you, are, what are uh, you on Twitter? Is it the cryptid guy on Twitter? I think it's encrypted. Uh, American Cryptid and Paranormal Society. All okay. Both of them. I'm going to pull it up. Okay. And uh, I just, Cryptid Guy is my moniker for everything. Everything's really pretty much under American Okay. Cryptid I'll, I'll put a link Society. anyway in the credits of the show, okay. but podcast listeners, you just heard it. All, all right. right. Thank Take you care. So much. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. This has been what a great, I hadn't talked to him in a couple of years. I'm telling you, so many things have changed in the space of the last three years. I'm telling you, even before we started rolling, we were, you know, he was telling me, I said, well, what have you been up to? And, you know, he's telling me, oh, I'm going to do the, these cons and all these things that, you know, that went on the back burner well, or disappeared in some cases uh, during this COVID stuff, uh, this craziness, you know, all this stuff is starting to come back. And, you know, the cons or the the, the, the investigations, I mean, let's face it, there's, there's a lot of parks that even during COVID, you couldn't even go there. You know, you're going to be by yourself. You still couldn't go in there. So thankfully, all that stuff has changed. And, you know, talking about interaction and being out there is like, that's a good thing. And we were talking about that, that a lot of these things are coming back for people, whether you're in the paranormal, the UFO, or the cryptid field, where, what can I say? Um, it's great, you know, when you read the books and the shows and everything. But there's something about when you go to these conferences or even investigate because you it's, you network you network you sit there and you gossip and you talk about cases or you exchange ideas uh and you and you definitely hear about things you're never going to see on you know just weird stuff odd stuff stuff like how's this that you might not even say talk about it because it's so weird that you're like you, you don't understand it as an investigator whatever your field is or it's like, hey, have you guys ever heard of had this experience? And this is these are the settings where you exchange those ideas or you learn about new things or you know, everybody's doing catch up. Um, 
And let me, uh, you know, I was really serious when I said, I think there's a part of us that has a reaction against all the technology. And like he said that you're being watched all the time and everywhere you go, you know, now everything is uh, measured and recorded and tracked um, that a lot of us yearn for the mystery, the romance of mystery, as in not that, by this, I don't mean making things up. I'm talking about stuff that it's like not defined, something that still has to be looked for or searched for, discovered. Um, I think that part of, which by the way, is how human beings, don't get me wrong. I, I like science. I believe in science. All right. But science is not everything. All right. The human soul and what makes us human, like he was saying that, you know, our intelligence or whatever, we, our posable thumbs maybe saved our butt. But science is great and we've invented or discovered certain things scientifically, but there's a lot of other, there's another part of us in the world, I'm not even going to say humans, and the world altogether, which where we cannot put science as the end-all be-all of everything. Okay, there has to be like a balance between these things. And I think at a soul level, here's, here we go. I think that we yearn for that. And that's why Eve, despite all these advances and everything that we encounter, you know, and everybody like posting, you know, just about every picture I see of everybody, they've got one of these going, yeah, one of those. Okay. Part of us is like, I don't want that. I, I, I want to go and you know, why do you think people do legend tripping? I mean, I know, yes, I know sometimes people go out there because they're recording stuff. But there's a lot of people that go legend tripping just for the adventure, for the discovery, the mystery. What is that? Oh, because not everything. I don't know. How can I say this? If there were no mysteries, if everything was explained, if everything was finite or like, that's it, that, that's all there is to it. And that's it. And we know it from A to Z. Da, da, da. It'd be boring. <laughs> I think that all humans, more, some more than other, but I'm going to say collective. Humans are explorers. Humans yearn to discover, uh, to go beyond what's known. Uh, always, of course, with the promise that there's something else. And when something's finite or discovered, like, yeah, we know that there's nothing, you know, whatever kind of like you mean that's it what and i think it's a backlash against all this progress it's progress but technology where and i want to part of it is where it's almost like everything is defined for you and controlled for you and i think as human beings that's not good for us and i don't think that's really what we want yes it facilitates life and some you know this is great <laughs> you get a flat tire you know, or it's great, like, uh, you know, something happens and you got to call somebody and say, look, you know, I'm running late or, hey, where are you? This is wonderful. Okay. But there's times where this is not wonderful. All right. And we're kind of held captive to it. And we need to live life like, yeah, I'm going to put you in my back pocket. And unless it's something, I don't want to use you. I don't want to be taking a picture of myself and, you know, everything or the food I'm going to eat either. It's like, come on, you know, um, I think that, that, that there's a part of us that's rebellious about that because technology and science and everything, that, that, that is not everything. That should not be everything for humans or the structure of our, of our lives or our society. It has a part, it has a part there, but there should always be that, that unknown part, you know, like they say, you know, how my, how much of the of the oceans and the world are unexplored. We don't know. I think that's fascinating, you know, because everybody's like, oh, let's go into outer space. That's great. You know, Elon's off to Mars. That's great. But there's so much here, even on planet Earth, that is yet to be discovered or found or verified, blah, 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 blah. And I think that's, to be honest with you, I think that's what's put us how can I say, of all the animals that I know of, besides us, I'm going to throw us into the animal kingdom there. You know, we are the ones that yearn to go beyond what we have. Most of the animals 
whether it's because of their instincts or they just exist within what they have. They, they don't, they're not off to, you know, go and discover something or find, you know, discover a new mountain or go whatever. It's like they're, they exist in the moment, whatever their habitat is, whatever their circumstances are, that's it. They don't go beyond that. And we're the ones that do, you know, we're the explorers, we're the discoverers. Yeah. 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 That's, I think that's really what makes like, that's what I told them. We do live in interesting times, very interesting times. Perplexing. Yeah. Very interesting. So again, guys, please go to mppellister.com, miamigoschronicles.com. Again, I have links to videos, to podcasts, to my Substack newsletter. Everything is on there. And again, the newsletter goes out about two or three times a week. And I have links to podcasts, older videos, articles, interesting stuff, giveaways, etc., etc., etc. So until next time, again, thank you for spending this time with me. You are all wonderful. Take care.